Big one-two punch. He had over 2,000 yards, net yards last year together in rushing. And you got the other two backs from the other team. Got right here, you got big old Chuck Muncie, Tony Galbraith, two other backs. These guys are one-two combinations. They're fourth and fifth in the league in rushing. One guy on both sides. You got Tony Galbraith, two in the league in the NFC and pass receiving. These guys do it all. It's going to be a heck of a good thing to see today, watching them both work. Archie Manning back at quarterback last week. A sterling performance against Atlanta after missing four games with an ankle injury. Jim Plunkett scheduled to start today. Bothered by sore ribs, however, Tom, and we may see some of Scott Bull. Scott we'll Bull, a young quarterback. This guy's got a good. He's really working out very well for the 49ers, I think, with Plunkett's injury. Uh, with his ribs, it's bothered him quite extensively this year. He hasn't been able to get those passes off as far as throwing touchdown passes. So it should be interesting to see how San Francisco really goes. All right. We are awaiting the teams to take the field. New Orleans will be to our left, the north end of the field, in white, and the 49ers in their home red uniforms to our right. The officials today, the referee is Ben Dreit, the umpire John Keck, headlinesman Frank Glover, line judge Jack Johnson, back judge Stan Javi, and the field judge is Dick Ferguson. The 49ers will kick off. New Orleans will receive to our left. And it's a beautiful day as usual this time of year in the Great Bay Area. Temperature of 70 degrees. Very little wind so far. We'll be watching that. It can be a problem here at Candlestick, as everyone knows. But it does not appear to be uh, anything serious at game time. And so the 49ers, who really need some help from the Los Angeles Rams, if they have any chance at all to make the playoffs, they lost their first five. They have since come on to win uh, four of their next five, but they lost the big game last week against the Rams, and they are up against it here. For the Saints, well, Hank Stram says, we just want to win. We're playing to win. He's got two rookies in his defensive lineup. But they're there because of injuries and also because they have been playing well. Fultz and Campbell, and the kickoff taken at the 10-yard line by Clarence Chapman, number 24 for New Orleans. The kick by Ray Wershing of the 49ers, and it is first down New Orleans at about the 28-yard line. Starting for New Orleans today, the receivers will be number 84, Rich Motti, starting for John Gilliam, who's bothered with a Charlie horse. Don Herman, the wide receiver, number 87. And at tight end, James Thaxton, number 86, will start ahead of Henry Childs, who is bothered with a toe injury. Childs, the big receiver for the Saints, and I'm sure we'll see him. Archie Manning at quarterback number eight. Mike Strawn will start for Chuck Muncie, who's bothered with a foot injury, but you know he'll be playing today. And alongside of number 34, Tony Galbraith. That is Galbraith, the ball carrier trying left side and picking up about four yards on the play. Defensively for the San Francisco 49ers, across, or offensive line, pardon me, for the New Orleans Saints, Marv Montgomery and Terry Steve on the left side, Emmanuel Zanders, Don Morrison on the right side, the center is John Hill. It'll be second and five for the New Orleans Saints, the ball at their own 34-yard line. Hank Stram will give you, give you an awful lot of looks as you Saints fans look at are already aware. And he will run. Short of the first down, he picked up maybe two and a half on the play. He was stopped by Vanderbunt, number 52, and Jimmy Webb, number 74. Defensively for the San Francisco 49ers, the gold rush up front. Number 53, Tommy Hart, number 86, Cedric Hardman are the ends. Jimmy Webb and Cleveland Elam are the tackles. The linebackers are 52, Skip Vanderbunt, 55 in the middle, Bruce Elia. And on the right side, Willie Harper, number 59. Dave Washington, who had been playing on the right side, gone for the season with a dislocated hip. That was suffered two weeks ago against New Orleans. Third and two for the Saints. Mike Strong, hit behind the line of scrimmage by Bruce Elia. Number 55, slashing in to put the stop on him. And they will be short of the first down. And the punting unit comes on. This is where San Francisco has really been falling down, Tim, as their special teams have been very disappointed in what their effort has been in the last few weeks. Last week they had a punt block. They had some bad punting by Tom Whittem, who had a dual role earlier in the season as far as a field goal, kicker, and a punter, which put a lot of pressure on him. Right now he should be one of the best punters in the league, but he's not, he hasn't been indicative this year of what he's been doing. Tom Blanchard will punt. Stan Black will receive. Blanchard standing on his own 22-yard line, and 49 has hit a man over the line, but he got back in time. Blanchard's punt taken at the 26 by Black, and he's hit at the 25 and thrown back by number 37, Tommy Myers, the safety, and the 49ers will have their first offensive opportunity. 
Here's the punt returner right now. This is the good coverage by New Orleans. Hank Stram stresses those special teams. This is a very important part of the game today, especially the way things have been happening with block punts and extra points have been being missed like what's going around the league today. Jim Plunkett brings out the 49ers at quarterback with Delvin Williams and Wilbur Jackson, the running backs. This is Jackson, uh, Williams, pardon me, number 24, Delvin Williams. Williams, who ran for 98 yards against the Rams last week, is stopped by Bob Pollard, number 82. The wide receivers for the 49ers, the veteran, number 18, Gene Washington. On the other side, number 83, Kenny Harrison. And the tight end, one of the good ones, Tom Mitchell, number 84. My old roommate, yeah. Sam. <laughs> And with Plunkett in the backfield, number 40, Wilbur Jackson, number 24, Delvin Williams, each had better than 100 yards against New Orleans two weeks ago. Second and seven, after a gain of three by Williams. This is Jackson, straight ahead, good hole behind left guard. A flag is down. He was near the first down. Here's a good shot of the end zone. Watch. It's a quick draw right up the middle. There's a holding right in there. Look at the official looking at it. I think we got John Hill right there throwing it right on him. Better Spiel and Chris put the tackle on him, but the flag is against San Francisco. I think it's Randy Cross, the center for them, has a holding penalty. Let's see what the officials have to say about it. Our referee is Ben Dreith today. Offensive holding, number 51. That's not a bad guess there, Big Tim. <laughs> Good old Randy Cross came through. Randy Cross, the center, number 51. So it's second, and we'll call it uh, 17 to go for the 49ers. In the I formation, slot left. Washington is in the slot number 18. Now they shift to these pro sets, split backs. Plunkett bothered by rib injuries. We'll see how he throws today. That one's right on the money to Kenny Harrison. Connors Chapman, number 24 on the coverage. That ball floated up in the air, though. He didn't have enough zip on it, I don't think. Here's Jimmy setting up again. He's got the protection. He's laying that ball up high. Harrison goes deep up and gets it. Short of the first down, though, Tim. They still have that third down and a long yardy situation here. Gained about 10 yards on the play, so it's third and about seven. And that brings some defensive changes for the Saints in this obvious passing situation. In comes Tommy Myers, number 37, to join the defensive backfield. Third down play. We're just underway here at Candlestick in all kinds of motion. A busted play. Plunkett goes straight ahead. He saw the Saints coming and I think just elected to hold on to the ball. But uh, it may be that there's no infraction. Is there a flag down, Tommy? I don't no, see one. I don't see anything at all. The thing is, New Orleans just faked that blitz. They had everybody up on the line of scrimmage and I think the center got a little over anxious and snapped the ball quick on it. A wasted play for the 49ers as it turns out and brings up fourth down. Tom Whittem will punt. Rich Motti, number 84, standing on his 23-yard line awaiting it. Whittem hits from the 20, just got it away. Good punt. Excellent punt taken at the 25 by Motti. Motti works his way out to the 35, close to the 36-yard line. And he's stopped there by Randy Cross, number 51. Good old Atlanta. They're coming back again right there. 17-0 over Tampa Bay. That poor Tampa Bay team. 25 without a win. Cincinnati wallop the New York Giants today, 30 to 13, as that central division of the AFC continues to be a real dogfight. They had to win that one to keep alive. 48-yard punt by Tom Whittem. Saints come out in the I formation, stack die on first down. Manning will throw. Manning will run. <laughs> he slipped and fell over the 40-yard line. I think he would have liked to have gone a little bit farther, but he also saw three red shirts looming at him, and uh, even Manning, although he likes to run, also wants to preserve himself. He picked up about eight on the play. Los Angeles shut out the Browns today, nine to nothing. I'm a little bit surprised. The Browns have had a good season. They're tough at home. That game was in Cleveland. The last time the Browns were shut out was back in 1972 when Pittsburgh did it to them, 30 to zip. That is bad news for the 49ers to have a Ram victory there today. I guarantee you they were watching the scoreboard on that game because they felt if, they, if the Rams would lose that game, they need all the help they can get back in, in this race. Second and three. This is Galbraith, number 34, trying the left guard side behind blocking by Terry Steve. And he is close to the first down. Let's see if they're going to measure. 
Another score right there. New England staying making her tough in that, um, in that Eastern Division race with Baltimore. They're 114 6 over Philadelphia. Philadelphia has been a much improved ball club, and every game that they've lost this year has been, uh, they've been right in there. Pittsburgh beat the Jets today 23 to 20. And so again, uh, with the Cleveland and Cincinnati scores, a real interesting battle. It is third and about six inches for the Saints. Mike Strong, first down. Vanderbunt was there, number 52, and somebody underneath that pile. Mike Strong got the first down yardage, getting up very slowly. Number 72 is Cleveland Elam. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the San Francisco 49ers and the National Football League is prohibited. First down, New Orleans. The ball at their own 42-yard line. They have no score early in the first period here at Candlestick Park. In motion comes Herman, number 87. Strong. Good effort by Strong, who was hit actually at the line of scrimmage. Showed a little Tom Maddy workmanship and got himself into the 49ers territory to the 48. Keep those feet moving. That's all I used to hear. Keep them moving. Watch those big guards out in front of you and follow them. Hold on to them if you have to. Well, he got five doing it that way, and it'll be second and five for New Orleans. This puts the, uh, the offense in a good position where you can either pass or run on that second down so that the defense has to play on us. And when you got that big gold rush up there, you want to keep them in that, keep them down there so they don't get the pass rush if you do want to throw it. With a safety Mel Phillips who finally put the tackle on him. Straight ahead, trying for the first down yardage. They come up short by about a yard. That was Galbraith, number 34. And they'll be about a half a yard short. Third down coming up. Minnesota leading Green Bay 13 to 6 in the fourth period. And uh, that is, of course, a big one for the Vikings who have been having their problems. Houston leading Kansas City 20 to 6 in the third period. Kansas City sure has been having their problems this year, Tim. Third and uh, less than a yard to go for the Saints. Galbraith and Strawn, the running backs. We expect to see Muncie. He's not been there yet. Galbraith. Has the first down yardage? Well, depending on where they mark the ball, this is going to be close. It looked like he got pulled back a little bit. Bruce Elia, number 55, put the tackle on him. You can see how quick they're coming off the ball. The backs are getting it, diving over the top, getting their feet right to the line of scrimmage and then making the jump so they can get over the top to get that first down. It's going to be a close measurement, but it looks like they may have that first down, Tim. They're going to take a look at it. Elia, good effort from the middle linebacker, number 55, with help from Jimmy Webb. <laughs> Pardon me, number 74. And let's see where they mark it. First down, New Orleans. They keep their drive alive at the 43-yard line of the San Francisco 49ers. They say this game is a game of inches, and there it is right there, six of them. We've got under seven minutes remaining in the first period. Tim Ryan and Tom Matty at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Strawn and Galbraith, the running back for the Saints. Wide right comes number 87, Don Herman. Galbraith sat on the wing, and here's some of that Hank Strand window dressing they call it the NFL. Oh, the Play action. And he scrambles. Diving close to the 35-yard line. He went down about the 37. And it was Jimmy Webb, number 74, the left defensive tackle making the hit. To be successful against the 49er rush there, you've got to use a lot of play action passes. That holds that defensive line down on the line of scrimmage. And this is a key thing, especially with the kind of rush that San Francisco has. They've been doing another outstanding job this year. They started off slow, though, Tim. But I think that these guys are probably one of the best front fours in the game today. Second and four for the Saints. The ball is marked at the close to the 36-yard line of San Francisco. The Saints on the move. Galbraith, off left tackle, has the first down yardage. Elam, number 72, on the tackle. This is the quick, just a quick old dive play going back to your playbook of off a split T formation, look like right there. Just dive right up the middle, pick your hole and run. Galbraith, that big back, getting that extra yardage, getting the first down. They're having the key turnover. I mean, the key plays, as far as I'm concerned, is the third down and short yardage situations. If you can convert them into first downs, they're going to win ball games, and today so far, Archie's leading a good drive right here, right now. You saw a good block by number 68, Terry Steve, the left guard, second-year man from Wisconsin. 
Wide right is Paxton. Slot formation left to get with Strong. Strong just keeps digging over the 25-yard line. It was Skip Vanderbilt, number 52. And number 42, Tony Leonard, coming over from the left corner to help him. But not before the gain of, let's call it six yards, and second and four at the 25-yard line. The Saints moving the ball effectively both sides of the San Francisco defense. You know, Mr. Strong is really getting an opportunity to play today with Muncie hadn't been practicing until this Friday. He'd been hurt all week. And whenever you get a chance to get in there, I had to do this when I played as a back. I sat on a bench behind Lenny Moore a lot of times. And boy, when you get an opportunity, you want to keep do the best job you can, blocking and running. Tony Galbraith stopped by Cleveland Elam trying that left tackle side again. Little misdirection play. I'll tell you, Strawn right here. Here's Archie Manning handing off. Strawn gets a good block. He goes around the corner, gives that block so that, that Galbraith can get to the outside. Galbraith lowers his head right there and gets hit by the big man, Mr. Elam. Ralph McGill, number 49, comes up from his safety position to help out. It is third and about six inches, maybe <laughs> ten inches to go, very close. And they have had three of these situations <laughs> on this drive, third and very short. Uh, you don't have that very often, but they've, they've been moving the ball very effectively. This is what you've got to do against this team. You've got to establish your running game so that you can set up your passing game. Ball is at the 22 of San Francisco. They're in the eye. Strong again. Strong over the 20 has the first down. Mike Strong. Stopped by Tommy Hart, number 53, the left defensive end. Strong has rushed 35 times for 170 yards. Did not see much action early in the season, but when Muncie sustained the foot injury a couple of weeks ago, Strong got to play some, and he got the start today. They're listening very Kim intently. Kim Jones is in. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, Tommy, number 32, Kim Jones, has come into the backfield. Second-year man from Colorado State, acquired from the Baltimore Colts as a free agent. After the Colts had cut him, this is strong. Good tackle along the 20-yard line. Willie Harper, number 59, and Tommy Hart, or Bruce Elia, pardon me, 59 and 55. The linebackers have flagged down, apparently, against the Saints. Big holding penalty here. This could... These are the kind of mistakes that stop drives and you just can't have them, the holding penalty. But there you saw the flow of the defensive line of the San Francisco 49ers. They saw that quick pitch to the outside, and these big guys that they have up in front can really move very well laterally. Muncie has come into the ball game for the first time for New Orleans. The ball set back at the 29. Offensive holding, number 86. Jim Thaxton, number 86, the guilty culprit. And so that sets them back to the 29. A good drive had been underway. Let's see if they can recoup from that. Muncie is in there. First down, 20 yards to go. The ball, as we said, spotted at the 29 of San Francisco. We are still scoreless. Approaching uh, the two-minute mark here in the first quarter. Muncie on the draw. Straight ahead, nowhere to go. Got maybe three yards. Close to the 25. 26-yard line is where they're going to mark it. You can see Manning setting up on the draw right here. Muncie getting the ball, the handoff, opening both those arms to cover that ball. There's a hole there, and then boom, number 86, Thaxon just gets knocked back right in the hole, and then everybody comes in and finishes it up. Cleveland Elam and Willie Harper on the tackle. Harper, as we mentioned, starting for Dave Washington. Washington gone for the season with a dislocated hip. Second down, 16 to go. After the gain of four, Muncie and Jones are the running backs. That's Kim Jones cutting back into the traffic and picked up maybe four on the play. It'll be third and long. Let's call it third and 14 to go. Galbraith's coming back into the game here now, too. Hart and Harper made the tackle for San Francisco. The Gold Rush front four, Hart, Webb, Elam, and Hardman. Tom Matty said one of the real good ones, and despite the problems of San Francisco this year, they may not have as many sacks as they normally get, but they've been steady. Herman comes in motion back toward the ball to give us to Muncie. Muncie gets loose. Pushed out of bounds. At about the 13-yard line of San Francisco. That's short of the first down, however. Here's a, good, uh, here's a good ISO on Thaxon. A good down block right from the tight end, knocking the big defensive end back into the inside right there. 
You can see the follow-up. That's the kind of blocking you have to have to make that play go, Tim. You've got to be able to turn that corner where you get some room to run. Elia, the man to push him out of bounds. It'll be fourth and three. The ball is at the 13, and they're going to attempt the field goal. Rich Zaro, number 15. The ball will be spotted at the 20. Zaro from 30 yards away. And it's good. The New Orleans Saints have gone on the scoreboard to open the scoring here at Candlestick Park with 126 remaining here in the first quarter. The New Orleans Saints leading the San Francisco 49ers by a score of three to nothing. You know, this was a good steady drive. Manning moved the ball right down the field, kept it going. These are the kind of drives that you have to eat up that clock, too, because we're almost right now at the end of the first quarter here. Got 126 remaining, so, you know, this is what Stram wanted to do. He felt that if he could establish that running game against San Francisco, Tim, that he could really open the rest of his game up, and so far he's done that. As Hank said, you really don't want to let that uh, front four of theirs tee off on you. If, <laughs> you. if you've got to pass, you know they're coming. And Hank said, we'd rather not see that. We'd, we'd just soon run at them and see if we can keep them honest. So far he's done it. There's the man right there strutting around on the sideline. So Zaro will kick it off from the 35-yard line of New Orleans. Deep man is Paul Hofer, number 36, standing at the goal line. And he had to come way over to the sidelines to get the... He cannot stay in, but he touched the ball. He touched the ball, and it'll be first down at the one-yard line. And the crowd is not right. too thrilled with that play. I'm sure Ken Meyer, the 49er coach, didn't either. I'll tell you, this is where Ken Meyer is going to be upset again with these special teams. You can't make stupid plays like this. It's just ridiculous to have it on a one-yard line. Let that ball go. Take your chances. It was a line drive. It had gone out of the end zone. You had the ball on the 20. He had to run a long, long way to even try to catch that ball, Hofer did. And it was certainly a surprise that uh, he attempted to. He just didn't seem to know where the sideline was. And so Jim Plunkett starts... From his one-yard line, number 16 brings out the 49ers. They trail three to nothing. Williams and Jackson, the running back, straight ahead. Look at this is Jackson. He's at midfield. Clarence Chapman in pursuit will push him out at the 20-yard line of New Orleans. Oh! A straight-ahead dive play. And let's see here what happened. There was nothing fancy about that. A quick opener right up the middle. There he goes. Look at number 44. He's chasing him down. 24. Got the speed. He breaks to the outside. It's a 79-yard run. That's a big one. That's the biggest play they've had here today. i tell you one thing that happened there. Hank Stram not too pleased with that development. Chuck Crist, number 44, the safety, actually ran into an official who served to be one of the blockers on the play, but the linebacker appeared to be out of position. That's right. Where, what happened to the middle linebacker on that one? That, this brings that crowd to life a little bit here. First down for the 49ers at the 20, inside the 20 of the New Orleans Saints. Saints lead it 3 to nothing. Pitch out. Delvin Williams cuts inside, gets to about the 17-yard line. Bob Pollard, number 82, made the tackle. Watch Robert Woods right here on this block right here. He drives him right down in there. Number 65 right in there. The middle guard has a stun on to the other side. Williams just breaks up the middle and pops it to the outside. Never look back, I'll tell you. <laughs> Battersfield, the middle linebacker we could see on the replay, went to the left. He bought the action to his left, and that just opened the entire field for Jackson. Gain of three on the last play. It is second and seven, Delvin Williams. Inside the 15, stopped by Fettersfield, number 58. You got to feel a little bit sorry for Fettersfield because he's been such a stick out on this club. Last year, 122 tackles. He led the team in that department. He's had a, a fine season again this year, and uh, everybody can make a mistake. But between Fettersfield and Crisp running into the official, Jackson <laughs> found himself with a lot of running room. That's what you need, those kind of breaks. You just got to have a little bit of luck on your side every once in a while to get it going. It is third down. And the end of that quarter. About five and a half to go. Then that's how they'll start when they move to the other end of the field. At the end of one quarter, the New Orleans Saints lead the San Francisco 49ers three to nothing.
Schlitz Light Beer has a third fewer calories than our other fine beer, and all the taste beer drinkers expect from Schlitz. Is that what the gentleman always orders? That's his beer, the only light beer with gusto. We'll have two Schlitz Lights. Beer drinkers know it took Schlitz to bring the taste to light. This realistic 40-channel CB radio is on sale right now at your nearby Radio Shack for the unbelievable low price of $49.95. That's 50% off our catalog price. And our realistic model 466 is ready to use on all 40 CB channels. For under $50, get the convenience and security of two-way CB communication today. The sale-priced realistic 40-channel CB radio. Only at Radio Shack, a Tandy company. America's best-selling new car in history, the new Ford Fairmont. What's behind Fairmont's success? Fairmont's mileage, highest EPA mileage rating of any mid-size car. Fairmont's roominess, more room for the money than any other car. Fairmont's price, lowest sticker price of any mid-size car. Test drive America's best-selling new car ever at your Ford dealer, where the better ideas keep coming. Back at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, Tim Ryan and Tom Matty. It's 3-0 for the New Orleans Saints on a 30-yard field goal by Rich Zarro, but an 80-yard run, the longest this season in the National Conference, has the 49ers in position at the 20, at the 15-yard line, pardon me, of the New Orleans Saints. Third down, five to go. The safety crest is blitzing, and they get it. It went Joe Federscale, number 58. Putting the stop on Plunkett just as he came back with a ball. Chris had come right up to the line of scrimmage, and he had the pressure on. I'll tell you, Hank said he was going to be blitzing today like he did last week. He blitzed 21 times last week, which is really high. No one even touched him. Comes right in. Plunkett has nothing to do but eat the ball right here. Good defensive call by the New Orleans Saints. Puts him right back there far. Better spiel. Well, he was the guy, one of the players <laughs> who made the mistake in the long run, and he has made the last three tackles for New Orleans. And they're going to attempt the field goal from the 30-yard line. The kick by Ray Wershing is up and good. Ray Wershing just kind of lift that one over there, but that's all you have to do is get it over the crossbar. Uh, we a got a ball game. field goal by Ray Wershing, and we are tied at three early in the second quarter. Uh, excuse me, uh, you just bought a new maintenance-free Firestone Forever battery. How come? Uh, well, the warranty. <laughs> you see, if this battery ever fails to hold a charge for the original owner, uh, that's me, <laughs> in the car in which it was originally installed, right here, Firestone will replace it free with proof of purchase, provided it's not merely discharged or uh, damaged due to accident or abuse. Oh, and uh, I don't even have to put in water. <laughs> that answer your question? Uh, yes, it sure does. The Forever battery, now maintenance-free. The IBM Series 3, a copier duplicator that does it all. This button gives you copies on both sides. This button gives you reduced copies. This button collates. And to feed it, you don't even have to press a button. The IBM Series 3 copier duplicator, a copier duplicator that does it all. Ray Wershing has just kicked a 40-yard field goal to tie this game at three after a good defensive play by Fettersfield blunted the drive of the 49ers. And Wershing's kickoff is taken at the nine-yard line by Clarence Chapman. Chapman's got running room. Chapman runs into his own man. He's still loose. Look at Chapman. He can go all the way. Only Wershing is back there, and Hughes is there to block him. Touchdown, Clarence Chapman. Oh, boy. Well, the Saints come off the bench here to congratulate Clarence Chapman, who took it all the way from the nine-yard line. And the New Orleans Saints go back in front. I'll tell you one thing. The San Francisco 49ers special teams, again, are not doing the job. This is where you lose ball games. These are things that you practice, you work on, you've got to work on. Take that time. You can't have these kind of things happening. Two missed tackles. That last one there by number 28, Mike Burns, backup cornerback. And the only guy with a chance, you see him, number 14, was Ray Wershing, not noted for his speed <laughs> of foot. And uh, he had a pretty good escort there in 
in uh, number 54. I said Pat Hughes. That's not who it was, of course. Uh, yes, it was 54 Hughes, who was with him all the way as an escort, just in case Wershing attempted the tackle. So Zaro will attempt the point after. Blanchard holding, and it is good. And so, with 14.08 remaining in the first half, the New Orleans Saints, 10, the San Francisco 49ers, 3. Ford introduces the new Futura. A dramatic combination of styling and technology for 1978 and beyond. Futura. Its striking design is the result of computer modeling and extensive aerodynamic testing. Its excellent fuel economy results in part from the use of high-strength, low-alloy metals in Futura's construction. And Futura's ride is the result of a newly created advanced front suspension system. Futura. In a world where cars are looking more and more alike, it represents a change. A dramatic combination of styling and technology from 1978 and beyond. Realistically priced for today. See your Ford dealer for a personal test drive. Everybody is dead. Robert Redford. Everyone he trusts will try to kill him in Three Days of the Condor on the CBS Sunday Night Movies at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. Rich Zaro will kick it off from the New Orleans Saints, who have exploded to a 10-3 lead here. A 92-yard touchdown run, returning the kickoff by Clarence Chapman. Hofer takes it at his four-yard line, and Hofer has a good return for San Francisco. Oh, Still look at that. going. Hofer hit from behind and brought down at the 43-yard line. And you know he was trying to make up for his error on the last kickoff return that he made when he took the ball out of bounds at the one-yard line. Well, next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, the International Record Makers Tournament of Weightlifting. A dozen world record weightlifters led by the Russian World and Olympic Super Heavyweight Champion Vasily Alexiev, and along with the World's Strongest Men competition next Saturday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Wilbur Jackson, number 40, trying the left side. Fettersfield put the tackle on him, and he got maybe a yard and a half. Well, a thrilling return by Clarence Chapman. Let's see it again. I'll tell you, we got some excitement here. Mr. Chapman makes a great run. Not only does he pick his hole well, but here, watch how he cuts a, a, away from the grain right here. He breaks to the outside, breaks that arm tackle right there. Then all he has to do is pick up a blocker and really runs it in. It is second and nearly nine to go for the 49ers. Defending to our left and red. Plunkett, complete to Harrison. First down yardage for the 49ers at the 45-yard line inside the 45 of New Orleans. Ernie Jackson, number 30, on the coverage. Here's Plunkett setting up right now. Sets up, goes his primary receiver right there. It's a hook-in pattern. Comes up, defensive back is just late getting to the ball. Picks up that first down. They got to keep this drive moving, get back in the ball game again. I'll tell you, I didn't expect this quite as this exciting a ball game, Tim. No, I think perhaps the special team problems of the 49ers that they've experienced during the season have uh, led to some of that with <laughs> Chapman's return. But uh, we've had lots of action. Flags everywhere. Looked like movement on the right side of the 49er line. That first down play. Hey, the one thing that. The New Orleans is doing is they're mixing up their defenses down here at the line. They look they look like they're coming with that blitz, and that'll no that screws you up. Bro. Offense 69, false start. 20 peoples on the false start. Here it is, right here, the false start, right at the guard coming out too quick. Those linemen are bouncing around out there, no place to go. First and 15. A couple of people are interested in this score, I'm sure. Denver leads Baltimore seven to nothing in the first period. 41-yard touchdown pass, Morton to Rick Upchurch. Jackson, number 40. At about four and a half yards, we'll call it. Stopped by Pat Hughes, number 54. It'll be second and close to 11 yards to go. San Diego leading Seattle 10 to zip in the second quarter. The 49ers down 10 to 3. Hank Stram 
on the sidelines of New Orleans. His son, Stu Stram, is here today. Had a holiday weekend off from the University of Louisville, where he's been a very successful sophomore quarterback. Duncan will throw the blitz again to get him. Jim Murrow, number 57, blitzing from the left side. Hughes from the right side, number 54, right there behind him. And Fettersfield followed him on. So all three linebackers got in on Jim Plunkett, and they set him back to the 41-yard line of San Francisco. You know, Plunkett doesn't have any kind of a chance here. Nobody's touching these guys at all. They're coming through just clean, Jim. That's, you know, it, and the fans get, you know, give Brian the reaction of the big boo, but it's not his fault. You have to have some blocking to throw that football. The 46-yard line make that, and it is a third and very long, as you can see. They shift into the split backs. Jackson hit behind the line as these Saints are really coming defensively. Number 73, Joe Campbell, the rookie from Maryland. And the 49ers will have to punt a loss of about four on that play. The big man comes straight across again. He's coming through untouched. The back has got to have some room to be able to make a move to be able to run the ball. They've got two rookies on that front four of the Saints. Mike Fultz, number 72. Joe Campbell, number 73. Fultz at left tackle. Campbell at right end. A bouncing snap. Fielded nicely by Whittem. His punt hits at the 25. Bounces inside the 20, and they're going to let it just die there. It's touched at the 17-yard line, where it'll be first down for the Saints when play resumes here at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. I don't think there is a word in French for flirting, and no place in my life for it. Flirting is a game, and I don't play games. If I'm interested in a man, I let him know it. Directness can be so satisfying. Like Chanel Number no. 5 perfume, spray perfume and spray cologne. Chanel, it's one of the pleasures of being a woman. From blazing heat to paralyzing cold, season after season, the J.C. Penney battery has more power to start your car more dependably than any other car battery you can buy. And it never needs water. In fact, it's so dependable, it's warranted for as long as you own your car. If it ever fails to hold a charge, return it. We'll replace it, free. Only at J.C. Penney Auto Centers or Catalog Desks. It's the last battery your car will ever need. One of the cheerleaders here at Candlestick Park and the Sal Carson Band, known coast to coast. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Sal Carson's been playing here a long time. Yeah, I, I can remember when I used to live in the Bay Area. He was a 49er band leader. I Interesting uh, stat here, Tommy, that the Saints haven't thrown a pass yet. Their offense has come mainly from Clarence Chapman. Their <laughs> kickoff return, man. They've been running the ball well, and they run it well on this first down from their own 17-yard line. Tony Galbraith picked up Close to six yards, Tom. Well, the thing is this, is that, you know, Manning doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to throw the ball. you got these two big backs running. He hasn't thrown a pass as yet. Minnesota has defeated Green Bay 13-6, to an important win for the Vikings. Another tough loss for Bart Starr's Packers. In motion is Herman. Second and five. Mike Strawn, number 33, back in the lineup in Muncie spot at running back. Got a couple trying the right side. Ran into a lot of traffic over there. Mel Phillips, the safety, came up and got in on the action along with the linebacker, Skip Vanderbilt, number 52. It'll be third and two. There you are. What's happening down there in Houston? The boys are going crazy. They're beating Kansas City 26, fourth quarter. Two quarterbacks in this game, Plunkett and Manning, along with Pastorini down in Houston, all came in in the so-called year of the quarterback back in 1971. All three turned out to be NFL starters, played an achievement. Manning bothered with injuries and bothered again this year, and something he didn't like, and he elects to call timeout. You know, these kind of mistakes, I think, when you're up in the line of scrimmage, if he doesn't know exactly what he's doing, he's got to call the timeout, but... You know, timeouts are so important in the last two minutes of a ball game that, you know, you really like to save them. And I guess I, I was lucky. I played with one of the guys who I considered the master of the two-minute offense, and that was Unitas. He could really, he held those time, he really held those timeouts down to the last second. We've got 9.32 remaining in this first half. 
And some more golf action coming up on CBS Saturday, December 3rd at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. The Mixed Team Championship from Largo, Florida. Teams comprised of one member of the PGA Men's Tour and one member of the LPGA Tour. Field headed by defending champions Chichi Rodriguez and Joanne Washam. Ben Crenshaw will be teamed with Judy Rankin. Arnold and Sandra Palmer, no relation, but two of the big hitters in golf are playing together. Jerry Payton, Hollis Stacy, Lanny Watkins, and Laura Baugh. That should be a lot of fun. The Mixed Team Golf Championship from Largo, Florida, Saturday, December 3rd, Sunday, December 4th, here on CBS. Even CBS, we're trying to have that equal rights there with the women, huh? Oh, we got Challenge <laughs> of the Sexes and uh, all that good stuff. Hey, that challenge of the sexes has been an interesting program, Tim. It's really, they've really done a great job with that. Our director today, Tony Verna, is involved with that, and we do uh, want to uh, say happy birthday to Tony. It was his birthday yesterday. <laughs> Just gave us the raspberry and the headset because he's afraid we're going to say how old he is. But since he won't admit it, we won't mention it. <laughs> and one of our cameramen, Dave Finch, has a birthday today. <laughs> that's his out of, out of focus shot on the air now. Thank you. Tony Verna, our director, passed that on. Third down. New Orleans Saints, they lead this 10 to 3. They shift into the split backs. Third and two. Manning the throw. Complete. Galvin out of the backfield. And he got the first down yardage. No, Rich Motti, number 84. Rich Motti, the wide receiver, just darting out into the flat. First pass of the game by Archie Manning is complete for the first down. Archie saw this blitz coming real quick, sets up real quick, leads that ball to the outside. Marty catches it right there, gets the first down. I think that uh, San Francisco is trying to do the same thing that New Orleans has been successful with, is coming with that blitz. They're doing it more and more. Galbraith, number 34, the leading receiver, 35 catches for the Saints and often gets the pass in that situation, but they fooled everybody, including the announcer, and threw it to Marty. <laughs> Play action. Manning deep. Intended for Thaxton. Double coverage. And is it picked up? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Mel Phillips' play is dead. Play has been called because he went down with the ball, but he caught it. Mel Phillips, the veteran number 32, and the 49ers will have first down at their own 30-yard line. The thing that set this up is a pressure by the big four right now, right front four right there. Manning just lays that ball up. Bad decision on his part right there with that pass. Not a good pass. Double coverage on Thaxton, and he just kind of lobbed the ball, which gave Phillips the chance to make the catch right on his shoe tops. And Phillips uh, tried to run with the ball, but he had uh, already been downed, and so 49ers will have to settle for the intercept and a first down in their own territory. Now what's happening? A flag down evidently behind the play. Unless they have ruled he didn't catch the ball. Let's see. Ken Meyer, the 49er coach out there, asking for an explanation from Ben Dreith. There's Meyer. And Meyer oh, is hot. He is it hot. looks like they are saying he did not catch that ball. You know, I hesitated at the time as to see whether it could, maybe we can see that again, as to whether the ball hit the ground or not. Let's see. Oh, about three. He tripped. It looks like it touched, I'll don't you think, Tom? I did. I don't think there's any question about it. I'll tell you, these officials are on a ball. Well, one was and one wasn't, <laughs> evidently. <laughs> but one rolled at an intercept, and that's been overruled. And Ken Meyer talking to the official who made the call would be the back judge, Stan Javi, I believe. You know, the, the officials really do get, you know, a lot of trouble a lot of times because people second guess them. But doggone it here, you can see that ball hitting the ground, bouncing right back up into the in a Mel Phillips. It's an excellent call, and I think these guys should get some credit. They're going to get criticized here in San Francisco, of course, but I think he made a great call. And, you know, you're seeing it more and more this year that they're calling that play back and they get a huddle with the officials because they want to call as fair a game as they possibly can. Too. Well, if you're going to have more than one official, then you should be huddling on any of those questionable ones and that's what they did and they got the, the correct call as it appeared on our replay and it's second down for the New Orleans Saints. Mike Strong number 33 running hard out the right side gained about six yards on the play. It'll be third and close to four. It was Willie Hopper number 59 making the tackle along with Phillips number 32. In the second period, Dallas and Washington are scoreless. The Redskins fighting for a playoff spot. 
Well, they got a break on Thanksgiving Day when Miami knocked off St. Louis. Dallas and St. Louis still going at each other for top spot. In the NFC East. Phillips getting up slowly, number 32, and limping toward the San Francisco bench. Stan Black, number 26, comes in to replace him, the rookie from Mississippi State. Sam, these are interesting conversions. You look at the third down situation. New Orleans is for four out of six, which is great percentage as far as I'm concerned. San Francisco is zero out of two. Well, one of the things about those, uh, the New Orleans stat, as we commented earlier, Tom, they had three of those third and about a foot to go. You better convert those, you, you right? You better. <laughs> Stan Black in for Mel Phillips. Rookie's down choice. Third down, four to go. Play resumes here with 8.05 remaining here in the second period. And now Archie Manning calling Thaxton back in from the outside. Herman goes in motion. A little mix-up here on this play. Manning incomplete. He didn't. He tried to stop himself from throwing the ball. I guess it was intended for Galbraith. All right, Manning. Watch Manning doing a semi-roll. It's just a quick out again. Right there, he tries to put the string on it to pull it back in, but he couldn't do it. The coverage was great by San Francisco right there. A good decision. Throw that ball away in those kind of circumstances because he'd have been down the sideline for six points. Fourth down, and Tom Blanchard, the leading punter in the NFC, will kick from his own 22. Back to receive is Stan Black, standing at the 25. Wow, good kick. Driving him to the 15-yard line. Hit immediately at the 14. Number 37, Tommy Myers, down there to put the stop on him, and the... 49ers will not have your basic good field position when they have first down. The Fiesta Bowl on CBS Sunday, December 25th. Penn State and Arizona State. Penn State winning a thriller against Pittsburgh. And they will be in there against Arizona State here on CBS Christmas Day. The Sun Bowl also on CBS Saturday, December 31st. Stanford and LSU. And we were over at the Stanford campus yesterday. And uh, then uh, the Cotton Bowl is the biggie. Monday, January the 2nd, Texas, number one ranked against Notre Dame. And that's one that I certainly... Uh, I'm going to be watching that one for to. sure. <laughs> yes, I'll indeed. Tell you. Texas with a win over Texas A&M, number one in the country. And they would like to still be number one when the Cotton Bowl game is over. You'll see them all here on CBS. First down, 49ers at their own 15-yard line. Good coverage by Tommy Myers, setting them back there following the big punt by Blanchard. Play action. Punk it. Complete to Patterson. Good hit. Loose ball. Picked up by Merlo. And the Saints, if uh, there are no flags or whistles, Saints have first down at the 35-yard line. A tough break for the 49ers there. Again, Plunkett really sets up right here. He finds his receiver, looks back to the backside. It's a great throw. He really drills that ball. A good catch, but look at that hit right there. Cross up that ball. Big number 57 comes in, makes a recovery. And these, are, you know, that's a break that, you know, you got to make these kind of breaks, and New Orleans is making them today. Chuck Chris, number 44, was a man who popped Harrison, and uh, good play is turned over to the 49ers, to the uh, Saints, and they have first down at the 35-yard line. In motion comes Herman, number 87. Galbraith, right side, good gain, inside the 30-yard line. Tony Galbraith running behind the blocking of Zanders and Morrison. You know, Hank's staying right with that game plan. He told us he can run against these guys, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's coming right at them, picking the holes, popping them out. About five and a half on that play. Second down at the 30-yard line. Wide left comes Thaxton, number 86. Starting for Henry Childs. Childs bothers with a toe injury. Galbraith again. He has the first down to the 22-yard line of San Francisco. Yeah. Harper and McGill on the tackle, and a 49er is down. That is Ralph McGill. There you go with Galbraith right now. Pops right up the middle. Look at the back leading through there. McGill will come right in the corner right here of your screen right there, right at the end. He hits in there with his shoulder. Looks, Looks like he collided with his own man, eh, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> it sure does. I tell you, they finish it up there. 
You know, Galbraith's having a pretty good day so far today. He's nine run offensive plays. He's run. He's picked up 37 yards. Chuck Muncy back in on this series for the New Orleans Saints. Well, as usual, plenty of NFL action on CBS next Sunday. Chicago at Tampa Bay. The Bears still chasing the Minnesota Vikings. St. Louis and the New York Giants. A big one for the Cardinals there. And Washington against the Buffalo Bills. Next Sunday, regional action on CBS. And Detroit at Green Bay. Philadelphia at Dallas. The 49ers will be in Minnesota. All here on CBS. I don't think the 49ers want to go up to Minnesota. They're having some nice cold weather up there. It'll be a little different than the beautiful weather we've got here today. 70 degrees here at Candlestick Park. McGill comes to the sidelines and uh, apparently hurt his shoulder on that collision. Well, they had to send in Stan Black for Mel Phillips when he came limping off. And now they'll have some help in there for McGill. Number 22, Eddie Lewis in the ball game for McGill. Defensively for the 49ers. First down, New Orleans. Muncy. Muncy is stopped by number 75, Ed Gallagher. In on that front four now for the 49ers. And Muncy did not get much at all. We got Houston, Kansas City right here. Houston's really put it to him. 34 to 6 in the fourth quarter. Saints with six first downs to three by the 49ers as we have 5.48 remaining here in the second period. San Diego leading Seattle 13 to 7 now in the second quarter. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10 to go. Slot formation right for the Saints. Manning with lots of time intended for Charles. And he did not get in the end zone. That's what we're hesitating for. They mark it at about the two-inch line. <laughs> but Childs, coming in off the bench, makes his first catch of the day. Stan Black prevented the touchdown, but barely. I'll tell you, Archie sets up right here. It's a perfectly thrown ball. He lays it out to the outside. Not much finesse on the ball. It's a little duck wobbler. But he gets it right in there. Childs' hands. He's right on a six-inch line, it looks like. Henry Childs, who did not start because he's bothered by a toe injury. Thaxton got the start. But he comes in and catches the first pass thrown his way, and the Saints are right on the doorstep, literally. They lead this game, 10 to 3. <laughs> Manning for the touchdown, Archie Manning. Right. And the New Orleans Saints go in front, 16 to 3. Good drive by the Saints following the fumble recovery by Merlo. And the man, of course, uh, who should get equal credit, Chuck Crest, for putting the hit on Harrison that led to the fumble. There's Manning going for the score. And Hank Stram's got to like this situation as his club is uh, doing things well, both offensively and defensively. They're running the ball very efficiently. I'll tell you one thing. I, we, we started at the beginning of the program talking about the big running backs, and I think today you get an opportunity to see both sets of backfields right here working. They're both effective. They can do both everything. They block for each other. They can catch the ball. And I think they're the most effective <laughs> running field, two running backfields that we have in the league today. Zaro with a point after. And it's good. And so with 527 remaining here in the second period, the New Orleans Saints have jumped into a 17-3 lead over the Again, a reminder, the next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, the International Record Makers Tournament of Weightlifting. Long title, but these are big guys. They need a lot of room. <laughs> Vasily Alexiev, the Olympic super heavyweight champion. And he'll be challenged in the super heavyweight category by American Bruce Wilhelm, who finished among the top five in the September World Championship meet. Wilhelm is also one of the leaders in the world's strongest men competition. Those of you who have been watching that, and that will also be part of the CBS Sports Spectacular. The ninth event of the decathlon is the refrigerator race. <laughs> a 400-pound refrigerator strapped to their back, and they'll race a 40-yard course against time. How come you're not in that, Matty? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but in a refrigerator race, what's really great is if you win, you get to eat what's in it. <laughs> Zara <laughs> kicks it off, and it's taken at the six-yard line by Hofer, number 36. Hofer outside that room. Hofer back inside to the 50-yard line. Well, Paul Hofer has had two excellent returns 
that have made up for the mistake he made back in the first period. I tell you, here's a kid that's following his blocking. Look at that. He starts up the middle, sets it up, breaks to the outside. Follows his blocking, breaks again, picks that hole, breaks out to the sideline again. If he'd have had any more, he could have cut back here on the inside. He tries to cut back, keeps those legs driving, gives him excellent field position almost at the 50-yard line. Wade Bosarge finally made the tackle after the kicker. Rick Zaro turned him inside. First down, 49ers, good field position. Jackson, number 40. Jackson hurdles his way to the 42-yard line of San Francisco. Here you see my old dog too of New Orleans. You'll see my old dog roommate right here, number 84, Tom Mitchell. One of the best blocking tight ends in football today, I think. He, he's got Pollard. He keeps driving him right along. Stays with his blocking. And watch Williams. He comes right up. Look at Mitch all the way. Staying right with him. Holy mackerel. Good gain. About eight and a half yards on the play. Second and short for the 49ers. They're at the 42-yard line of New Orleans. Delvin Williams. Good defensive play. Fettersfield, number 58. Cutting through the traffic. And let's see if he got the first down yardage. No, he's short of it. Look at this. Denver, 14. Baltimore, nothing in the second period. Craig Morton has passed for another touchdown, this time to Jack Dolben. I tell you, my boys in Baltimore must be really uh, taking gas. 14-0 that second quarter. Wow. Third down and a little less than a yard to go here for the 49ers. Boy, they want to keep this alive. 17 to 3. Saints lead it. Williams hits and keeps going and has the first down yardage. Good effort. Second effort by Delvin Williams. Pat Hughes, number 54, the linebacker stopped him. That's the kind of running you have to have there. It looks like Jackson is picking his holes a little bit there. He doesn't seem like he's running with the authority that he usually runs with today, Tim. I, you know, he's, he's, he's going along that line of scrimmage, sort of picking his way. McGill has is, is got a pinched nerve in his neck, so if they need him, he's going to be back in the ball game later on. High formation here on first down for the 49ers. Now they shift to the pro set. Ball inside the 40-yard line of New Orleans. Williams straight ahead. And it was Hughes who got the arm tackle on him and hauled him down. Here again is a play that, you know, this is the same kind of play that popped before. If you catch him in a blitz like this, you can get by that linebacker that's coming and, you know, pinching to the inside. He can pick up that, you know, get by that line of scrimmage, and he got a one-on-one -on -one with a defensive back. And, those you know, those guys don't like to hit too hard. He got said, close to five on it. We'll call it second and five. 250 remaining in the second quarter. 49ers down 17 to 3. They'd like to get something here before halftime, but Jackson hit right at the line of scrimmage by Mike Fultz. Number 72, the second pick from Nebraska. And setting that sense, Saints a defense. Grooms number 78. Fultz number 72 on the left side. Bob Pollard playing over at right tackle. Normally the left defensive end for the Saints. And Joe Campbell, the rookie number 73 on the right side. The linebackers, Fettersfield in the middle, Merlo on the left, Hughes on the right, the secondary, Ernie Jackson, Jim Marsalis, Chuck Christ, and Clarence Chapman. Third down. Big one here for the 49ers. Here come the Saints again, and Jackson's got room. Jackson will score a touchdown. There again, that's what happens on the blitz. You pop it, you can go all the way. Wilbur Jackson. And the 49ers right back in at 35 yards for the score. They had the whole team coming right there, and Jackson just popped it up the middle. All he has to do is put on the steam and pumps it away. They're right back in this ball game, Tim. 17 to 9. Ray Wershing will attempt the point after. The thing that is, you know, New Orleans has been so successful prior to this with stopping it on that uh, on the big blitz with everybody coming. Jackson has 124 yards rushing. Tom Whittem will hold for the point after. We talked so much about these running backs. Jackson and Williams, Muncie and Galbraith, and the point after is good from Ray Worshing, number 14. And we've got ourselves a most interesting <laughs> ball game. Two minutes and one second remaining. All right, here you go. Now watch the linebackers coming straight across. There's a good key block right there. Williams just pops it. You can see how much room he has right there. He just breaks it, puts on the speed. Gets a little high step right here. <laughs> Those are the kind you like to do when you know you're going to get in that end zone. 
Wilbur Jackson and that makes it 17 to 10 as we are approaching the two minute warning should occur just after the kickoff. Wershing will kick it off from the 49ers 35 to our left and the cable car is in action around the <laughs> field here at Candlestick celebrating the score by the 49ers. I've heard everything. In Baltimore, we got a horse that runs around, but I never noticed the cable car going around. Oh, before. yeah, that's that's almost as uh, traditional as Sal Carson's band. <laughs> All right. Low kickoff. It's touched and fielded neatly at the 15-yard line. Kim Jones. And it's out of bounds. Close to the 35. So the Saints will start first and 10 from their own 35 yard line and they lead it 17 to 10 with two minutes to play in the half. Stanley salute. Thanks. Stanley, the do it yourself company. Stanley, we want to help you do things right. In stage one of my life, I couldn't stand dull wheels. I'm the same in stage two, with my new 78 Ford LTD2, the trimmer sportier LTD at a trimmer price. The LTD of mid-sized cars. If you're a sporty guy who appreciates the finer things in life, welcome to stage two. Isn't it you in an LTD2? You never know till you try. Stage two in LTD2. Welcome to LTD2, a better idea from Ford. Well, we're back here live again, right here, back in good old Candlestick Park, San Francisco, the greatest town in the country, I think. It's a great town, but I'll tell you one thing. We got that Super Bowl coming up down in New Orleans. We're looking forward to be down there to see that game, too. Tim Ryan and Tom Matty here at Candlestick Park on this beautiful afternoon in the Bay Area, 17 to 10. The New Orleans Saints leading the 49ers. Wilbur Jackson, a 34-yard touchdown run. The 49ers going 51 yards in six plays to get right back into this football game. First down for the Saints at the 35-yard line. Slot formation left. Muncy. Bouncing and bowling his way over the 40-yard line to about the 41. Muncy has not seen a great deal of action in this first half as Mike Strawn started. Must be bothered by a sore foot, as you probably know. Flag down on the play, and let's sort that one out. Referee Ben Dreith will have the word for us shortly. Have not seen a preliminary signal as yet. Neither have I. I wonder if it's holding. Usually when it's there, it's got to be holding. It's back here. He dropped the flag back a little farther when it happened. Well, it's obviously against New Orleans. Back to the 25-yard line. Offensive holding, number 79. Emmanuel Zanders, very fine veteran guard on the right side of the New Orleans offensive line. So it is first and 20. The ball at the 25. We have not had a lot of passing in this game. Jim Plunkett, three for three. Manning, two for four. The running has been efficient, and the big plays have come from the special teams. Galbraith, no way to go on that right side. I think good old New Orleans is going to be happy to go in at halftime with a 17-10 lead. You know, Manning has only thrown the ball four times, so it's completed two of them. And, and you look on the other side of the fence over here, Plunkett is three for three. So this has really been a good old ground game. Looks like the old Ohio State-Michigan game, and they've been... Both are very effective, and we said that these running backs are going to get a lot of work today, and they're getting it. Cleveland Elam and Willie Harper combined on the stop. Harper coming over from the right side. They come out in the I formation. Herman, number 87 in motion. Behind Archie Manning, play action. Deep for Herman. Picked off, but in a out of bounds. Yes, it's inbound. Boy. He cut this one, and he stayed inbounds. I'll tell you what, here it is. It's with the goal of the old arrow takeoff to the halfback down the sideline over there. Manning just pumps up and lets that ball fly, and watch Phillips come across from the all the way other side of the field. You can see the coverage on the ball. The ball goes up in the air. Phillips comes right through, grabs that thing, and hits the, hits the man before he goes out of bounds. 
So it is a good interception this time. Phillips gets credit for this one. Mel Phillips, 12th year man from North Carolina EMT, and Tony Leonard was back there on the coverage with him. Herman was the man in motion, but they had good double coverage on him. It's first down, 49ers. The ball at their own 26 yard line. 52 seconds left in the half. Delvin Williams. Williams winds up with about seven yards after a lot of running. <laughs> he got about 30 on that one. Flag down, or no, timeout called by the San Francisco 49ers. We have 43 seconds remaining in the first half. And there's a look at the timeout situation here for this first half with the 49ers trailing 17 to 10. And it's been a most interesting ball game through the first half. They took Tom Mitchell out to tight end. Tom hasn't got the greatest speed in the world. He's a, a great blocker, and he does get open. He's got the great hands, but uh, they want some speed in there as a receiver right now, so they put Seal in there at the tight end position. This timeout gives us the opportunity to remind you that Wednesday night, CBS invites you to share one last Christmas with Bing Crosby as it presents a warm Yuletide special with Bing, his family, and guest stars. It was recorded in England several weeks ago prior to the most unfortunate death of the great Bing Crosby. Wednesday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain here on CBS. 17 to 10, we have had some long gainers today. Wilbur Jackson went 80 yards back in the first quarter. Got down to the 13-yard line of New Orleans, but a big sack by the Saints sent them back and... The 49ers had to settle for a 40-yard field goal by Ray Worshing. Then we had Clarence Chapman take the next kickoff, 92 yards for a Saints score. So we've had some long gainers this afternoon, and we're only halfway through. Second and about four. Tonka under pressure from Powell. Tonka trying to get to that sideline, and he does over the 40-yard line. 34 seconds show on the clock. Got the first down on he it, too. He got the first down. Good gain by Plunkett, not noted for his running. <laughs> or his speed. Uh, he was lucky he's being chased by one of those big defensive linemen, I'll tell you. That's why he was running a little bit faster, <laughs> I think. <laughs> There's two kinds of speed, I uh, used to say. One was the kind that you had with fear of the guy catching you. The other was just straight-out speed. First down, 49ers at their own 40-yard line. They come out in the eye with Gene Washington, number 18, in the slot right. Saints are blitzing. And they get him. Pat Hughes in number 73. Joe Campbell, the rookie right defensive end. The first pressure came from Fultz from the left tackle side. Loss of about five on the play. I'll tell you, New Orleans is gambling with that blitz again. This time they got him right in the backfield again. That's their third sack today, and it's three sacks for 23 yards. Another timeout call by the 49ers with 27 seconds remaining in the half. They trail by seven, remember? Look at this. Oh, the old dogs in Washington are pulling it out. Seven nothing over Dallas in the second quarter. Joe Theismann, a one-yard touchdown run with 2.36 remaining in the half in that game. They're not quite to that two-minute warning in that game against uh, uh, Dallas. Good old Washington needs, ex needs it. They have to win this game to stay alive if they want to get it. Jim Plunkett conferring with Ken Meyer. They'll have second down. The ball at their own 36-yard line. Close to 15 yards to go for the first down, and they've got that clock to worry about. 27 seconds left in the half. Well, we've had a wide-open football game, basically a running game, but as we've commented, the, the big gainers have provided the excitement. <laughs> Two of them by Wilbur Jackson from the line of scrimmage and the 92-yard touchdown run by Clarence Chapman for the New Orleans Saints. Those good old 80-yard 80, 80 runs are the kind that you like to look up in the statistic book because that really adds, you know, those net yards to your per carry. And boy, I tell you, that helps when you're carrying down there about 3-9. It'll jump you up to about 4.2 yards per carry. Sal Carson's fan bringing it to you during the timeout. <laughs> Second down. Blunkett. Sideliner. Oh, intercepted. Oh, Billy Jackson, number 30, intended for Harrison, number 83. If Mr. Harrison. Jackson would have had that one, Tim, he'd have been down the sideline dancing in that end zone. 
Harrison was actually open on the play, but uh, the ball hanging a little bit, and Ernie Jackson went up for it. Couldn't quite hang on. Third down for the 49ers. 21 seconds on the clock. Harrison wide right. Washington wide left. Seven Williams. Good run by Williams. Out near the 50 to about the 48, maybe 49, where they marked the ball. Short of the first down by a yard or two. 13 seconds remaining, and the final timeout called by San Francisco. You know, I don't know, Tim, whether that was a good call or not. This is a fourth down situation. They've got two yards to go. What are you going to do? Are they going to put it up for grabs or what? They've got 13 seconds left of the ball game. I think this, in this half anyway. 17 to 10. They trail by the touchdown. I would... Uh, well, I like to see them go in these situations. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, go it makes for it, it exciting. Thing is here, it looks like they're going to punt. If you were if you were good to get the first down, time-wise, you probably wouldn't get right. another playoff. But uh, what's the harm in throwing the long pass There's in no, this situation? I'd take the chance with it, but, you know, it puts them in a good position, and uh, New Orleans would have two more timeouts called to get, be able to get that ball back into play. But to call a timeout and then punt, that's sort of, you know... Not terribly creative. Not good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's creative either. I think Mr. I think Mr. Strand may come after this one. He's yelling on that sideline, telling some people to do a few things out there. They've got ten men on up up on the line of scrimmage. Rich Motty standing at the ten yard line, awaiting the punt from Tom Whittem. Whittem standing at his own thirty-four. Thirteen seconds left in the first half. Low, he's going to throw. But they didn't execute. It was intended for Ayers. John Ayers, number 68. Widom's pass, but it's incomplete, and the Saints, with eight seconds on the clock, will have the ball just inside the 50-yard line in San Francisco territory. Oh, I'll tell you, Widom had a spiral out of it anyway. <laughs> well, I like that. I like that play. We were, you know, being a little bit critical. Critical of their lack of... Uh, Imagination. <laughs> Thank you. It's a, it's a song title of the same name. Yeah. And they were very uh, creative, but unfortunately, uh, no cigar. Now, what do you do here? Do you put that ball up in the air? I think you've got to go for the big one. <laughs> the one bomb, let it fly. Let's see what happens. 17 to 10, the Saints lead it. It's a reverse Thaxton. There's Matt in the backfield and drop. Wilson Harper, number 59, saw that one coming, and that'll end the half. So at the end of this first half, New Orleans 17, San Francisco 10, and let's return to our studios in New York. Inside this new Firestone radial tire is an improved steel cord with 5 million miles of developmental testing. Where once we used 5 strands, we now use 10 strands of steel. 7, around 2, wrapped by 1. A cord construction so important, Firestone named the tire for it. Seven, two, one. The new steel belted radial 721. Now, from Firestone. Are you still chained to? Gotcha. The rechargeable Norelco rotary razor lets you walk away, free from nicks and cuts. Its 36 surgical steel rotary razor blades are safely protected inside three floating heads to give you a comfortable shave that's razor close, razor smooth for up to three weeks on a single charge. The rechargeable Norelco rotary razor. It lets you walk away from. Gotcha. When do you say After we find one more mile an hour. time that's right for a cold beer is perfect for the smooth taste of the king of beers, Budweiser. When you say Budweiser, here's to you, gentlemen. You said it all. Archie's in for surprises, and you're in for some laughs when a secret vigilante group recruits him. Would you join us in a little reprimand? Hey! 
I'm with you all the way. I'll be a member of the club for life here. Something special on All in the Family, earlier this Sunday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports Spectacular presents the International Record Makers Tournament of Weightlifting with the world and Olympic super heavyweight champion Vasily Alexiev of the Soviet Union heading an international field of world record weightlifters. Plus the world's strongest men competition featuring the refrigerator race. That's next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. Cleveland Browns were beaten today, and the Pittsburgh Steelers took a game lead in that tough AFC Central Division race because of action like this. Bradshaw pulling out against the New York Jets. He wants Stallworth, and he's got him for the touchdown. Moments later, it was Bradshaw again, this time going to Swan. After the extra point, the first was missed. It was 13-6. But the Jets don't quit under Walt Michaels. Here's Robinson to Scott Durking for the touchdown. Game tied at 13. Durking, who had a big day, fumbles there, and Robin Cole pounces on it. Franco Harris later goes over from the one. It was 20 to 13. Richard Todd, playing for the first time in three weeks with an injured knee, hit this touchdown pass. It was not enough. Final score, 23-20. Pittsburgh over the New York Jets. Right now, several important games are working. Let's get you up to date around the league. Seattle leading San Diego by a point. That game is in the second quarter. Baltimore just kicked a field goal at the half. The Broncos lead. Two touchdown passes by Morton. Dallas and Washington in a tough one. And that Redskin defense is turning in a sensational afternoon so far. New Orleans, San Francisco, the game you're watching at the half. Saints lead it by seven points. Some great plays in that game. 34 to 13. Houston explodes past Kansas City today. Now finals. Minnesota over Green Bay by seven. Pittsburgh beats the New York Jets by three. New England beats Philadelphia 14-6. The Eagles miss an extra point, an eight-point margin. Cincinnati routes the Giants 30-13, the final in that game. Los Angeles drops Cleveland a game back at Pittsburgh with a 9-0 shutout. And Tampa Bay loses for the 25th straight time. Ten of those 25 setbacks are shutouts. Jimmy the Greek, come on in now and give us your early line on the bowl games. Let's start with the Cotton Bowl. Cotton Bowl. Texas by a razor's edge to remain number one over the Irish. Michigan will be the strongest favorite of all the bowl teams in the Rose Bowl over Washington. And Oklahoma will be better than a touchdown favorite over Arkansas. In the Sugar Bowl, Alabama and Ohio State are really a toss-up, but Alabama might have just a nose edge. In the Fiesta Bowl, Penn State by a touchdown over Arizona State. In the Sun Bowl, LSU and Stanford are real toughy, but I give the edge to LSU. And in the Gator Bowl, Pittsburgh by just a touchdown over Clemson. There you are, the gospel according to the Greek. And the NFL today will continue on CBS right after these messages from your local stations. Share a one last Christmas with the beloved Bing Crosby in a Yuletide special taped recently in England, Wednesday night on CBS. Here at halftime in San Francisco, the New Orleans Saints lead the 49ers 17 to 10 in a wide open uh, kind of football game that uh, Joe Thomas, the general manager of the 49ers, must be just uh, shaking his head a little bit about. Special teams, Joe, have been a problem for you all season long, and they cost you a touchdown in the first half. Well, you know, we had this problem right from the preseason on in one fashion or another, and you saw it today we made uh, two mistakes on the kickoff. One where we had our... Um, Paul Hofer. Paul Hofer running on an angle, ran the ball out of uh, out of bounds on about the two or three yard line. I did, I'm not sure if he knew exactly where he was on the field, but he had to make a hard run to catch the ball, he couldn't control himself, ran up, and we wound up with the ball two or three yard line. The other one really hurt us when the guy went all the way with that ball, and this takes so much out of your ball club for morale sake. So, uh, but again, you know, last week we had a punt block, it cost us a touchdown, we had a low kick. So it's been plaguing us all year long. Joe, when you took over here, 
It was another one of those kind of uh, reclamation uh, projects for Joe Thomas, who's done so well elsewhere. But you came in here in a little bit different situation. You had a very solid football team, and yet you went 0-5. How do you explain that? You haven't had a lot of tough uh, injury problems. This is a, a pretty good football team in terms of personnel. Well, this is the thing that we have to look at when the season's over. We're going to check our personnel out thoroughly and see if we have to make any moves any place and whatnot. Are you saying maybe they're not as good as we think well, they are? that's the thing we have to check to see, and hopefully we can. The big thing that hurt us here, uh, we didn't have the first or second round draft choice this year. You know, last year they gave up two first rounds, and the thing I think I heard our football club more than anything else uh, here, Tim, is uh, in the last, uh, since 71, we've had, uh, I say the club here has had uh, nine first round picks. We had three ball players to show for, that's Plunkett, Webb, and Jackson. Now, that, that's three men out of nine picks, first round picks. In your first and second round picks, this is where the cream of the crop is, that what you have to do well in. And, uh, you know, last year we didn't have a first, a second, or a fifth. So I hope this year, having all our draft choice, we can come up with a couple of young people to come in and give us a little inspiration. Joe, what about Jim Plunkett? Uh, he has not had an outstanding season, but nor has the entire team. How do you feel about him and his future with the 49ers? Well, we haven't been scoring much, and this is the thing that I say when the year is over, we got to evaluate where it is, if it's our offensive line or where it is. Now, Jim is uh, the big thing about uh, Plunkett is he's lost a lot of weight to uh, start the season, and uh, he's thrown the ball better, and I believe than he did last year. He's had some sore ribs, it's been plaguing him for the last several weeks, and I think it's hurt his throwing somewhat. And um, today, you know, he threw a couple of good balls. We had one fumbled, and you never like to place a blame on any one particular person. I know when you lose, you want to blame it on a quarterback. When you win, the quarterback gets the most credit. But it's not that way. You've got to have a solid football club to be a winner. Well, Joe, the thing is also true, though, that uh, you've got to build around a quarterback, and you went out and got Burt Jones when you were in Baltimore. And certainly uh, the success of the Colts has been largely because of Burt Jones. Sure, he's got a good supporting cast. But the question is really, uh, do you think that Plunkett can be the kind of uh, quarterback leader that Burt Jones is or, or others? Well, you know, we're talking about probably, to me, right now, the best quarterback in all football. But after watching Bob Greasy last week, I don't know. He's, I don't know what they're feeding him down there. But after watching that Thursday ball game, um, he looked awfully sharp. But every place I've been, this is one thing that we always try to look for is a quarterback to make sure he's a winning quarterback. We had Tarkin, and we had Greasy, and we had Bird Jones. Um, I don't know in college yet if there's anything that's that outstanding or not. If there is, we're going to go after him if he possibly can. You could never have too many or a good enough quarterback. All right. The other guy that always gets burned when a team is having problems is the coach. And uh, what about Ken Meyer? How do you feel about him? Are we going to get a vote of confidence here today? Well, you know, this vote of confidence, I always say it's a kiss of death, and that's why I never talk about that. We're going to watch our program all the way through. We have to evaluate our whole program all the way through. You know, we got in here in April, and we got a late start with this football club this year, and we just got to do the best job we can, get through the year, and I'm just sorry we lost the ball game last week. That, that was the turning point of our season. We won the ball game against the Rams last week. Anything could happen, and it could right. happen today. It's so much tougher to keep your club up in a situation like this than it would have been. You can tell by our fans. We were sold out last week. We even locally TV'd it. And if we won last week, I know we would have had better than 50,000 people here today. Joe, thank you very much. Your record uh, speaks for itself in the past. We wish you that same kind of success right. here Tim. in San Francisco. Tim, thank Joe you. Joe Thomas, and we'll return to Candlestick Park in a moment. What happens to the money you put in your full-service bank? Well, some of it is helping a citizens group restore this decaying neighborhood. One of the citizens is Lynn Dunsavage. Ed, when our bank committed a million dollars in loans to save these fine old homes, people started making repairs. New people moved in. You can see the results, Ed. Quite a story. But that's full-service banking, helping people change things for the better. In fact, no financial institution can help you and your community more than a full-service bank. This computer is the brain behind an extraordinary new game from Parker Brothers, codename Sector. You use the computer to track down an unseen sub. The sub uses the computer to escape and counterattack. Your mission, be the first ship to sink the enemy sub. Range 10, speed 9, firing range. Step 3, fire. All right. Codename Sector, the board game where you match wits with a computer. When we play in the Superdome for fans like ours, you want to win big. 
And the New Orleans Saints are getting ready to do just that. Hello, I'm Darren Moore. And I don't have to tell you about my town. You can just hear it. New Orleans is Bourbon Street and all that jazz. It's the French Quarter and a city famous for pretty girls. And you don't know what having a good time means till you've been to Mardi Gras. But you know the people here work as hard as they play. They run the third largest port in the world and have made New Orleans a major oil refining and medical center. And between the good living and the hard work, they take time to be United Way volunteers. They help the mentally ill and handicapped, work in the boys clubs, YWCA, and many other agencies funded by our United Way. New Orleans wouldn't be the same without them. For all our volunteers, we'd like to say, thanks to you, it works. For all of us, the United Way. At halftime, New Orleans leads San Francisco 17 to 10. And now let's join Tom Matty in a cast of thousands. <laughs> a cast of thousands, thank you. We got some real favorites right here today, and I just want to... I asked him to come on over and say hello. A guy I played ball with, good old Mr. Stonebreaker himself. He has the greatest name in football, I think, as far as a, a linebacker. We got Danny Abramowitz, a guy who played for both these teams here. And I got another young man right here, Stu Stram, who's a quarterback for a little college in Louisville. And they've got a game coming up. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, sir. We're playing in the bowl game. It's called the Independence Bowl. It's in Shreveport, Louisiana. We'll be playing Louisiana Tech the 17th of December. That's great. He's a quarterback. He's, he led them to, came in after about the fifth game this year, and he ended up with a 7-3-1 record. So that's a pretty good ball game for a young man. Your father and your father following your dad's footsteps pretty well, aren't you? I'm trying to. <laughs> Listen, I just wanted to ask Steve and Danny, you know, since Hank has come to New Orleans, and you guys are living in the greatest town, I think, around. I'm sort of prejudiced. I know you got a lot of us. But, you know, what do you think has been the major change as far as what's happened to this ball club? They're a pretty exciting ball club. Well, I think the big thing, Tom, is they're a disciplined club now. They're well-conditioned, and uh, that's the glaring difference of the former Saints clubs and the clubs that are playing today. I think Hank's imagination shows up in the offense. I still think there's some glaring weaknesses in personnel, which you can't cure overnight in a competitive market today, but at least they're a well-conditioned, disciplined club, and I think that's a compliment to Hank Stram and his entire staff. Yeah, and Danny's doing the radio for him. You know, you get to see this ball club all the time, Danny. Have you seen really any real dramatic changes that you think that the people back there can really look forward to in the coming upcoming season. Yes, the offensive line has really come on the last six or seven weeks. I think they've only given up like six sacks. Muncie, of course, the great back. Galbraith, I think, is the finest fullback in the league. They had some early injuries in the secondary time that really hurt them, and the Saints can't afford that. They're not a contending team. Contenders can afford a few injuries, but the Saints can't. But I think the Hank Stram will bring this team around. You know, Danny, the receivers that you've had, the beginning of the season, you lost three big receivers right there. Uh, Manning has really come back. Uh, he's been really plagued with injuries. Uh, what kind of physical condition do you think he, he's going to be in uh, the rest of the season? Well, you can tell, Tom, he's limping a little bit today. He's not the same Arch Manning as far as scrambling. His play selection, I think, is outstanding. He's an intelligent quarterback, and I think this is going to get him over the hump. Uh, w even though he has the injury, he's still going to come on strong the rest of the season. And I, another thing is, you know, Stoney, uh, uh, they're doing a lot more blitzing up here. You remember you used to do a little bit of that up in Baltimore. Oh, yeah, we did quite a bit of that, Tom. We had to with our personnel, you know, that we couldn't stay honest all the time. The big thing here is they've got to gamble. They know if they sit back and wait in a standard 4-3 and they don't mix their defense up, don't gamble, they're going to get burnt, and this is what they're doing defensively. You know, we've got the big Super Bowl coming on with CBS, and we want to want to we want to get a few predictions from a couple of the old dogs around here. Who do you think's going to be in it? I think it's uh, probably Dallas. Uh, that's no great revelation, I'm sure, in the NFC. And of course, I think Denver or Baltimore can beat Oakland out in that AFC. So it's a three-way race over there, and I just like Dallas in the NFC. Dang. Well, I think that uh, Pittsburgh is making their move. I think they're really coming on strong, and. Uh, We've never agreed all our lives. <laughs> so I'm not going to agree now. <laughs> well, I think that uh, Dallas also in the, in the other right. division. Well, listen, I want to thank all you guys for coming over, and I especially want to wish a lot of good luck to a young man here who's playing quarterback. I used to have to do that every once in a while, and I know what the kind of pressure is. And good luck, and I'm going to turn this right back over to good old Mr. Ryan. Thank you, Tom, Matty. We're about to start the second half here with the Saints leading at 17 to 10. The Saints had eight first downs in the first half to six by the 49ers. 100 yards net rushing for New Orleans, 166 for San Francisco. Net yards passing for the Saints, 28, 23 for the 49ers. And we're underway, and that ball went out of bounds at about the one-yard line. I mean, that was close, so they'll have to kick it off again. And you know Paul Hofer, number 36, the deep man was going to watch that ball all the way after what happened to him back in the first quarter. There he is. 
Poker, a real good backup running back, does not see a lot of work uh, offensively with that outstanding backfield the 49ers have, but he's a valuable guy nonetheless. And he had a couple of real good returns following that error he made in the first period. So the Saints, 17 to 10 at the half. And there's a look at uh, the stats that we've just been uh, reading to you. And uh, in the passing department, you can <laughs> see that there hasn't been a great deal of action. Three out of five for the 49ers, two out of five for Archie Manning of the Saints. And the Saints had uh, one picked up by Mel Phillips of the 49ers secondary. They had the ball a fairly equal amount of time. Probably the difference in that 18 minutes to 11 minutes in favor of New Orleans came in their first series when they used up quite a lot of time. After that, the ball's been going back and forth pretty evenly. So the kickoff from the 30-yard line, Rich Zaro after the five-yard penalty for kicking it out of bounds, and the breeze has come up enough to blow the ball off the tee. We had very little wind earlier in the game, but now we can see those ribbons on the goalpost starting to uh, indicate that there's a little more wind. Zaro again kind of hooks it to the right side. It comes down at the 15. It's fumbled by Hofer. Hofer has to go back for it. Good hit on him at the 20, and he struggled at the 22. Rick Kingray, number 53. Put the good knock on him, and so the 49ers will start at the 22. I think he might have had some sun in his eyes on that ball right there. He picks it up, comes back around the other way, does make a good recovery on the ball right here, but he does get hits. Gets hit, he gets that old pinching wedge in there, they call it. So first down for the 49ers. They trail 17 to 10. The ball at the 22-yard line. Jim Plunk at the quarterback. Wilbur Jackson, Delvin Williams, the running backs. The wide receivers, Gene Washington and Kenny Harrison. Jackson, uh, Williams, number 24. Not much room on the left side of that Saints defense. Joe Fettersfield coming over from the middle linebacker position. Pat Hughes coming all the way over from the right side linebacker. Across the front, Groom, 78. Fultz, 72. Fultz, the rookie from Nebraska. Pollard, 82 at right tackle. Joe Campbell, number 73 is the right defensive end. Fettersfield, Merlo and Hughes, the linebackers. Jackson, Marsalis, Christ and Chapman, the secondary for New Orleans. Second down and nine after a gain of one by Delvin Williams. Williams, the fourth leading rusher in the National Conference. This is Jackson, he's having a big day. Trying for the first down and he'll be close. Wilbur Jackson, number 40. Came into the game with 473 yards rushing, and he's over 100 here already. That was that quick trap, trap right up the middle where that guard just cuts across over there. Jackson, all he has to do is follow that guard, breaks through the hole, and picks up good yardage. There's that rushing yardage for Wilbur Jackson at the uh, lower part of your screen, 133 <laughs> yards. <laughs> Let's figure out what that is per carry. That's oh, right. Right. He <laughs> had two big ones, of course, that created that for him. Galbraith leading the... Saints with 42 yards, and it is a first down for San Francisco. The ball at their 32. 17 to 10. Tim Ryan and Tom Matty at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. The rookie Joe Campbell put the stop on the last play for New Orleans, but uh, the 49ers got the first down. Play action. Puck it up the middle. Washington complete. Down at the 32 if it holds up. Marcellus on the coverage along with Ernie Jackson. Here's an end zone shot of it. The fake play right there. Plunkett sets up. Just leads that ball off for Gene Washington. Leading receiver on the 49ers team. We have a flag on the play and I think it was just holding defensively. That's the preliminary signal. It's been declined by the 49ers. This play is a good one. Mr. Washington looks it in. And gets wrapped after he catches it, but he has a big play. And gives him that first down in deep in the territory. Gene Washington's 19th reception of the season. And the 49ers early here in the third. A 41-yard gain has them in New Orleans territory at the 34-yard line. Jackson. Jackson got close to five on the play. Fettersfield, number 58, the tackle, along with Pollard, number 82. A 
Again, yeah. Jackson picked his hole there very well. He came up to the line of scrimmage, saw that the first hole was plugged up, bounced to the outside, and picked up five yards. Anytime you can get a, a five-yard rush on a first down situation, that puts that, the offensive ball club in, in, in control of the situation. The ball at the 29, Pollard uh, going off, and coming in as Elix Price, number 75. Pollard kind of limped off, and that's why the officials held up play in order to give him time to get off the field. Elix Price had been a starter, now a backup behind the rookie of uh, Mike Fultz. Second down. Six yards to go. Gave him about four and a half on that last one. <laughs> Williams, number 24. Short of the first down yardage, got inside the 25-yard line. Elix Price on the tackle. And Price comes in the ball game. They're going to test him right away, right there. They're running right at him. They blow him right back out. Look at the block by the back coming through Jackson. He does a follow-up. The offensive tackle sets him up. And Price, there he is right there. He limps off the field. Didn't take him long to get him in and out. So it is third and about a yard to go for the 49ers. Trying to get that time touchdown. Delvin Williams to the 20 for the first down. Pettersfield on the tackle. Pat Hughes, number 54, there with him. You can watch Fetterspiel right here, right now. Watch him with the flow of the action. Number 58 coming across. Eric Williams with the ball. 58 comes across, fills the hole. It's awful hard to get, you know, make a tackle like that on balance, but he brings him down, although he does get the first down. 49ers on the opening drive of the third period inside the 20 of New Orleans. Saints lead it 17 to 10. Jackson, behind left guard. The blocking of Steve Lawson, number 65, and the tackle 77, Gene Barrett. Joe Campbell, number 73, the rookie on the tackle with help from Bob Pollard, number 82. The ball at the 15-yard line, gain of four, it'll be second and six. And the 49ers <laughs> grinding it out between they're, the tackles. They're knocking on the door. All they are behind seven points. We've got a heck of a ball game. They get a score here. Might have another sudden death. Good boot. Williams looking for a hole. Didn't find very much of one. Picked up maybe three on the play. Pat Hughes was there. Number 54. Put the first hit on him. And Grooms number 78. It looked like that time he had the opportunity to get back to the outside. He had Mitchell and uh, one of the offensive guards outside around the corner. If he could fake that inside move and then bounce to the outside, he might have been able to pick up some extra yards on him. Third and three, the ball at the 12-yard line. Key play here early in the second half for the 49ers. They have been moving it steadily on this first drive, mainly between the tackles. Delvin Williams, all room there, battled his way to the 10, but looks like he's short of the first down. He's got about a couple of feet to go. I don't even think he has a full yard to go, but I think he is short, Tim, of it. Now, here's a big, this is what coaches are paid for right now. This is the kind of decision that you have to make. Do you go for it or do you go for the... You know, go for the field goal. Jim Merlo made the tackle. And they are going to be fourth and, uh, let's say, about six inches. I think, I think this is a, gut, the ball. a gutty decision right here. I like that. <laughs> go for it. Well, now, here's where New Orleans has to dig in the trenches right now and stop it. Bunker. Stacked up, but I think he got it. Everything here will depend on where they mark the ball, but it looked like his motion had him uh, easily in there for the first down. <laughs> you want to talk about piles, watch this one on this on the replay. You can just see people jumping all over each other. First down, 49ers. <laughs> ball at the nine-yard line of New Orleans. Washington and Harrison, the wide receivers. Stretch wide on either side, and they give it to Jackson. He's got running room. Jackson hit it to two loose ball. 
The ball was fumbled. It looked like Gene Washington came up with the ball. My and man, break little... there for San Francisco because that would have uh, certainly been a frustrating thing for them to drive so well and lose the ball at the one yard line, but they've got it. Gene Washington recovering the fumble of Wilbur Jackson. Wilbur Jackson has all the room in the world. Come out here. Number 24 comes right in, really hits, you know, puts his helmet right in that ball. Washington falls on it. It's a big break for Frisco. That was Clarence Chapman, number 24, who put the hit on him, kind of a block tackle. And uh, he just connected with the ball, but a very alert Gene Washington. Picked it up for the 49ers. First, second down, pardon me, and goal at the one. Jackson, touchdown. Wilbur Jackson. <laughs> Tim, how's that for camera coverage, boy? <laughs> we knew where the play was going that time. This is perfect. It's just a delay, fake one way. Middle linebacker goes with the, with the flow of the action. The backs are leaning towards the right, but to the left of your screen. Boom. There's Fettersville filling a hole right there. It's a perfect call. Touchdown. We got a ball game. Jackson's second touchdown of the afternoon for the 49ers makes it 17 to 16. Ray Wershing will attempt the point after. And that was good from Ray Wershing. We're tied at 17 all. And it was Steve Lawson, number 65, who opened that hole for Jackson. And that's how we stand. system do the running. Just show a major credit card, license, sign, and get the car. I don't have to run through airports? Not with Avis. I can walk through airports. We drive hard with Avis. Avis, we don't know another way. I'm walking through airports. Excuse me, ma'am. We'd like to take away their Schlitz and have them try our beer. You want to take away their Schlitz? You want to take away their Gusto? <laughs> You're cute. Dumb, but cute. You want to take away their slits, their gusto? You're going to end up a cornerstone in a high rise. <laughs> They're going to turn you into an off ramp on the interstate. Take away their gusto. If you don't have slits, you don't have gusto. Probably you don't have beer slits. We are tied at 17 here at Candlestick Park. Ray Wershing will kick it off for the 49ers. Wilbur Jackson, second touchdown of the day, tying it for San Francisco. And as you can see, uh, we have some wind now at Candlestick, which is not untypical. The deep men are Motti 84, Chapman 24 for the Saints standing at about their five-yard line, so they realize that there's a wind factor. Wershing gets a good kickoff, nonetheless. Comes down at the five-yard line. Rich Motti, number 84. Motti is stopped at the 25-yard line by Dave Williams, number 30, backup running back. And this reminder that next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific, the CBS Sports Spectacular featuring the International Record Makers Tournament of Weightlifting. And uh, that will feature Vasily Alexiev. You remember that big guy from <laughs> the Soviet <laughs> Union during the Olympics and from the United States challenging him will be Bruce Wilhelm. Also, another edition of the world's strongest men. Don't miss it. They're going to carry refrigerators on their backs. <laughs> I wouldn't miss that for the world. In motion is Herman. First down, Galbraith, big hole, over the 30 to the 33-yard line of New Orleans. That's almost the same play that San Francisco just scored on. It's a counteraction where the back takes that step to the right side or to the left side. The flow of the play goes one way, and the back comes counter against the other way. We also have an injury down there in the field. That is Tony Leonard, number 42, and Bruce Ely, number 55. They were both hurt on the play. Linebacker's bigger, so nobody's paying any attention to him. They're, they're helping the little guy, Tony Leonard, the cornerback. So as the trainers attend to Tony Leonard, we have this opportunity to remind you over Sal Carson's band that the final two rounds of the Mixed Team Golf Championship will be televised from Lago, Florida here on CBS, Saturday and Sunday, December 3rd and 4th. 3 p.m. Pacific on Saturday, 2 p.m. Pacific on Sunday. Teams comprised of one member from the PGA Men's Tour, one from the LPGA Tour. And you'll see some outstanding and colorful golfers. Chi-Chi Rodriguez playing with Joanne Washam, Ben Crenshaw and Judy Rankin, Arnold Palmer and Sandra Palmer, Lanny Watkins and Laura Baugh, Tom Weisskopf and Jan Stevenson, many more. 
It'll be an exciting show and something a little bit different from the golf world. That's the Mixed Team Championship, Saturday and Sunday, December 3rd and 4th here on CBS. playing something a little bit different. <laughs> Good old Star Wars. All right, second down, two to go. Good game by Galbraith of eight yards on the play. Galbraith again for the first down and looked like he had it. Tony Galbraith, number 34. First down, the Saints, as they come right back from the San Francisco touchdown to launch a drive of their own following the kickoff. They're now at the 36-yard line of the Saints, first and 10. Mr. Thaxton and Mr. Phillips are having a few words down there. I feel we might have a little action yet. Mike Straw, number 33, good hole, running hard out to the 44-yard line. Hit there by Elia, number 55, the middle linebacker for San Francisco. It'll be second and about two. On that play, Tim, what happens is with a quick pitch out like that, he has the opportunity to take it all the way to the sideline or pick that hole wherever, he's, wherever it's at. And when you do, that's when you pick up those legs. Boom, he, he, you know, he lays it away. Elia still grimacing in some pain. He was hurt on the preceding play, number 55, but he was right back there to make that tackle. Galbraith. Big hole off the left side into San Francisco territory. All three linebackers in on it, Harper, Ely, and Vanderbunt. But not before uh, the first down picked up by the Saints to the 48 of San Francisco. You know, he's six foot, 220 pounds, and he can run like a deer, too, I'll tell you. Number 72, Cleveland Elam. The right defensive tackle, that's what uh, you got to look at if you're Marv Montgomery or Terry Steve. Good head on Mike Strawn. He had a little bit of room and then all of a sudden thrown back, but they'll mark his forward progress two yards upfield. It'll be second and eight. Ball at the 45-yard line. Let's make it a three-yard gain, second and seven. There's Mr. Muncy coming back in with his big old glasses on, he's noted for. Seven to nothing for the Redskins over Dallas still. And they're in the third quarter now. Interesting ball game there. Baltimore has kicked two field goals. Tony Linhart doing the work. And it's 14 to six. Well, the 49ers bench uh, is eager. They're up there right on the sideline and they have been asked to uh, cease and desist. Stan Jabby. The back judge saying, uh, come on, fellas, back away from that sideline. Ken Meyer is uh, saying, hey, come on, I want my boys to get involved here, cheerlead a little bit. I think he's saying something else, too. But <laughs> <laughs> I admit that that was my artistic license, giving a rather loose interpretation of what Ken Meyer was saying to Stan Jabby. <laughs> Mr. Stan down there. Second and seven. There's that score with Baltimore. Baltimore's coming back, 14-6. We're tied at 17 here in San Francisco. Saints on the move. Galbraith, straight ahead. Following John Hill as center. Got maybe three yards on the play. It'll be third down and three more to go. You know, I think Manning, you know, He's coming in here prepared, I think. Uh, they've got a good game plan. They've been sticking with it. It's been effective. They're not panicking right now, even though it's a tie ball game right now. They're hanging right in there. And I think he's doing a good job calling. Cedric Hardman, Willie Harper. Come on, guys. Come our way. We're ready for you. That's Hardman. They have Ed Bradley in the middle linebacker. Elia took himself out. He's hurting a little bit. Galbraith. Boy, did he get a shot at the line of scrimmage and bounced forward. A flag is down. That means only one thing in my book. It's a holding penalty. Right on the case, Tom Maddie. That was the call preliminarily. He had enough for the first down there, too. Yes, he did. He took one real good shot, but he bounced forward and had the first down yardage. 
but that is washed out. It comes back to the 49-yard line of New Orleans. Offensive holding, number 62. John Hill, the center, guilty of holding. So it is third and 13. Here you get a chance to see number 62 right there holding him. As Galba breaks off, right there, gets the first down, but Mr. John Hill, the official's right on top, right on top of it. That was Jimmy Webb, number 74, he had the grip on. There you see Tony Galbraith getting his fingers ready. He's been carrying the ball quite a bit today and very effectively. He's got 62 yards and 13 carries, Tim, so far. Banning the throw, he sacked. Webb hit him high, and Elam hit him low. <laughs> and Cleveland Elam has 15 and a half sacks coming into this game. He just picked up another one, at least a half. Webb, uh, the first guy to wrap him, wrap Manning, you'll see it here. Hello, Archie. So the Saints will have to punt. From their own 22, it's Tom Blanchard, the conference's leading punter. Good kick. At the 20-yard line, fair catch is called by Stan Black, number 26. And so the 49ers will start from their own 20 when play resumes. 335 remaining in the third quarter. 35 remaining here in the third period. We're tied at 17. A 44-yard punt by Tom Blanchard has San Francisco first and 10 at their 20. That was Jackson straight ahead to the 25-yard line. Jackson's having one heck of a day, I'll Isn't tell you he? that. Terrific. He's over 150 yards right now. Got two touchdowns. He had an 80-yard run that led to a field goal back in the first period. Then he went 34 yards for his first touchdown, scored another from one yard out. It's a big day for Wilbur Jackson, second and five for the 49ers. Jackson number 40, Williams number 24. Delvin Williams. Picked up about two, maybe three. Let's see how they mark it. We're going to give him three, and it's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Third and one. And in come the heavyweights to join that <laughs> offensive line. Obradovich, 89. Paul Seal, 85. Double tight ends in the third and short situation here in 49ers territory at the 29-yard line. Jackson out near the 40-yard line brings the crowd alive. First down, San Francisco. They spotted at the 39. Here again, you can see the great offensive fire out by the San Francisco 49ers. Jackson picks this all well. They're trying to strip that ball off, but you got to cover it up pretty good. He's got 14 carries now for 166 yards. Took the two cornerbacks to put the tackle on him, Clarence Chapman and Ernie Jackson. If he had beaten them, it's another six. You know, they complement each other. Del Williams, Wilbur Jackson, they, they block for each other. They're both great runners. They catch that football. These guys are uh, great one-two punches we've, we've set all along. First down, 49ers. This time, they've got Jackson wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Pat Hughes coming in from the right linebacker spot. Greeted him just after Plunkett gave him the ball, and Jim Merlo came over from the left side to get in on the action. Plunkett is four for five and 95 yards. Has not thrown a great deal, but he's had it on the money. Boys from Dallas are coming back right now. They're 7-7. Seven, seven. Golden Richards, a four-yard pass from Roger Staubach, tying that game. Second down. 13 yards to go. After the loss of three, Delvin Williams. Williams cannot get away from Ernie Jackson. And then he's stacked up by Pollard. Big and Woody number Peoples 73, right Campbell. Yeah. Number 69, Woody Peoples leading the play right around the corner there. The back, you know, you can only run as fast as those linemen can go, Tim. You know, everybody would say, always used to say, well, you're not very fast. And I said, well, I'm as fast as my guards are, and that's all I have to do because, you know, once they get out in front of there, once you get by them and they throw that key block, that's when you're allowed to show that speed that you have. I didn't have any. <laughs> Third down, nine to go. Ken Bordelon, number 50, is in at linebacker. Marcellus back in at safety. Outside comes Jackson. Quick block, and Jackson 
to the 31-yard line of New Orleans. Borderline number 50 made the tackle, but way downfield. A big first down for the 49ers. Here's Jen. Here it is again as we are at the end of the third quarter with the score. New Orleans 17, San Francisco 17. We now pause for a word from your local station. D. Robert Redford and Faye Dunaway in the television premiere of Three Days of the Condor. Tonight at 9, 8 Central and Mountain on CBS. Actually, it's the president of the Tom Matty fan club. <laughs> there the, there's First one down guy. for the 49ers, and that man is excited. 32-yard line of New Orleans, the 49ers on the move again. We are just underway in the fourth period. Bobby Farrell is in the backfield. Number 38, joining Delvin Williams. Bucket of the throw on first down. That ball hung there and up, and Jackson knocked it away from Gene Washington. Gene Washington had him beat there, too, Tim. He got behind him, broke the... There he is right now. Watch a great defensive play right now. Just timed the ball perfectly on this jump and knocks it right out of the waiting arms of Gene Washington. That's frustration when you're a receiver. Wilbur Jackson, who has left the game at least momentarily, left it with 191 yards on just 16 carries. Not a bad day's work. Not a bad day's work. And we'll see if he was... Uh, no, he's back in. So if he had an injury, it was uh, obviously minor. And then Bobby Farrell was in for just the one play. Jackson, number 40. Williams, number 24. Second and 10, 49ers. Reverse and Plunkett picks up the loose ball as Harrison, the wide receiver, coming around on the reverse, dropped the handoff from uh, Delvin Williams. And Campbell was right there to make sure Plunkett didn't go anywhere. I don't think Jim wanted to go anywhere except <laughs> under the AstroTurf at that point. I'll tell you, here's a good call, too. It's a, it's a handoff to the halfback. Williams right there. He hands it off. It's, it's supposed to be a fake or a handoff. Who knows? But he knocks it out of the hands. No, I think he tried to hand it off. It, he didn't look the ball into Harry. And a right. pile up there. Chris had a piece of it. But I think another Saint came up with the recovery. And there is a flag down, remember. Here's Jackson on the replay. He's going, makes a great break to the outside. Get, look how he's carrying the boy. Just knocks it out himself. No one hits it. That's Chris with the first shot at it. But he didn't hang on. Let's see who's got it. Randy Cross, I believe, came up with it, number 51. I think they're still down there fighting on it. Well, if he got it, the 49ers will have a chance to keep the drive going, although they are short of the first down even at that point. Offside signaled against against the 49ers. <laughs> you can see the referee. Defense is offside. Defense. Oh. The Saints are offside. He did signal the other way, but I think he was he was trying to listen to Ken Meyer, the coach of the 49ers, and telling him, hey, Ken, be quiet. Let me make the call. He had actually signaled it against San Francisco, but the call goes against the Saints, and we have to uh, assume that the 49ers had retained possession as well. Now, there's the proper signal. They've still got a third down, long yardage situation. They've got to come up with a big play here to keep this drive going. But at least it puts them in field goal range. The ball at the 32-yard line. It is third and 10 for the 49ers. They come out in the eye formation. They have not run much from the eye. They've come out and done this. Shifted into the split back set. Oh, what a hit. Mike Brooks, the rookie number 72, setting back Delvin Williams and making that field goal try a little bit longer. 
Mr. Fultz is one of those small defensive linemen that are coming in a league today. 6'5", <laughs> 278 oh, pounds. Oh, boy. <laughs> From Nebraska, the second round pick behind Joe Campbell of Maryland. And this young man is uh, determined to uh, be a player. Hank Stram says there is no doubt about Fultz and Campbell. They are both going to be stars. They're getting uh, starting action now. One of them ahead of Elix Price. That's Fultz and Campbell because of injuries. Derlin Moore. Field goal tried by Wershing is way short. He did get it into the end zone. <laughs> but well short of the goal post. And so the score remains at 17 all. One little fender bender. And I'll probably lose half a day chasing down estimates. You don't have to chase estimates with Allstate. I don't? Not with Allstate's drive-in claim centers. We take care of the estimate, and we can settle up on the spot. Just a couple more minutes. Allstate has hundreds of drive-in locations, so you don't have to chase estimates. What a difference. When it takes being different to be better, right. Allstate will do it. That's a promise from us, the good hands people. You know, it looked like a light day. With nothing to deliver but posters for the AC spark plug, buy seven, get one free sale. What could be easier, right? Wrong. Do you know how many places sell AC spark plugs? And everyone with a poster like this is selling eight AC spark plugs for the price of seven, as long as supplies last. Sure, getting a free AC spark plug is a great idea. But you better move fast. Chuck Muncie. University of California star. He's got a few friends in this area. I bet he's got a bunch of them over here watching him play today. He's got a ranch out in this area, doesn't he? Raising horses. Oh, he was, he was one of the greats at Berkeley. Center John Hill leads the Saints out. They have first down at their 33-yard line following the missed field goal. Hardman pass complete to Galbraith. They took a great deal on it, maybe three yards. Hit immediately. Pat Hughes, number 54, and Ed Bradley. You can see the pressure that's being put on Manning right here. He ducks out of one tacker, just gets rid of that ball. Bradley and Harper, I said Hughes. I meant uh, Bradley, number 54, and Harper, number 59. Bradley in at the middle linebacker for Bruce Ely, whom I don't think has returned since uh, he went off with uh, an injury of some kind. Good old Buckeye, Mr. Ely. Ohio State, one of Woody's boys. He'll call it a gain of four, second and six. Heading under pressure and a good catch by Galbraith. Complete to Childs. Does he have the first down? Got a the face mask down. on it, too. And it looks like the face mask on Phillips, number 32. Put the tackle on Childs. Childs has not been in a great deal today, but each time he's come in, he's caught the ball. You know, Tim, that was an air a really a perfect throw by Manning. Watch this. He sets up right here, and as Childs breaks to the outside, that ball is there. You'll be able to see it. It's just that he turned to the outside, the ball was there. Now watch the face mask right here. He just actually grabs him. It's not, it's not an intentional shot at all. It's just a five-yard penalty. So the Saints are now first down at their own 49-yard line as Henry Childs, bothered by a bad toe, nonetheless has made two key receptions. You know, it's interesting. A lot of the ball players today, we've never had them before, but uh, uh, the guys are coming with what they call it the AstroTurf toe or the, uh, the synthetic toe or whatever it is. But it is an aggravating injury. Muncy breaking with that big loping stride of his. A good gain close to 10 yards. He'll be a little bit short of the first down, but not much. You know, talking to Stram about Muncy, you know, he'd been injured during the week and started practicing on Friday. But he says, here's the kind of a kid that you got to have. He's the big back. He can do it all. He blocks for the, you know, he blocks for uh, Galbraith. And Galbraith blocks for him. And, and Galbraith said in, in so many words, it's as much he can be as great as he wants to be. Big number 75 is Ed Gallagher in defensively on the front four for the 49ers. Second and one. And that looks like first down yardage for Kim Jones, number 32. So the Saints get it going again inside the 40-yard line of San Francisco. 11:21 remaining in regulation time. We are tied at 17 all. Tim Ryan and Tom Maddy at Candlestick Park, and there is an injured 49er. And 
Not entirely sure uh, who that is, but that looks like he will not be back this afternoon. We'll have to check that one for you. I think it was the defensive back. Uh, Muncie squirting through the middle of the line, gets over the 35 to about the 34-yard line. Good old Muncie wants to get in there and stay in there. He hasn't seen too much action this afternoon, but when he gets his hands on that ball, he's going to be able, you know, he's ripping, up, rip, ripping off that yardage. Wilbur Jackson is evidently the injured man down there, and uh, what a day he has had. He's deserved his rest. We hope it's not serious. Slot formation left for the Saints. Second and four to go. And he quickly out to Charles, and he threw it right into the ground. It looked like they wanted to drop Charles back off and set the screen up. You could see Xanders out here ready to block along with Morrison. I think Archie didn't get him the ball. I think Archie just hurries his throw here. That's all it was. See the, see the lineman coming out, setting it up out there. All he has to do is get it out there. Charles catches that ball, waits for his lineman to come through. Then what you do is you cut back against the green, and that gives you an opportunity to break some tackles. 10-22 remaining, fourth period. Third down, about four yards to go. Manning is four for eight right now, champion. 40 yards. And the 49ers stop the Saints drive. As Manning is sacked at the 41-yard line of San Francisco, it'll be fourth down. And the injury report is Tony Leonard, number 42, and we saw him come off earlier. So it is not Wilbur Jackson. Jackson had uh, been hurt, uh, but it was obviously a minor injury. He came back into the game, but that is Tony Leonard, and it does not look like he'll return. Tom Blanchard standing at his 44-yard line to hurry the punt as the snap was wide. It's taken at the 13-yard line by Stan Black, and he did not get very far. So with 9.56 remaining in regulation time, we still have a tie ball game. The Saints and the 49ers at 17. When you're thirsting for a beer or two, but what you're doing isn't through, that's the time to take a natural break. Like now, with Anheuser-Busch Natural Light, a beer that's crisp and refreshing, brewed naturally with nothing artificial. And since it won't fill you up, it won't slow you down. Anheuser-Busch Natural Light, it's time to take, take a natural break. Inside this new Firestone radial tire is an improved steel cord with five million miles of developmental testing. Where once we used five strands, we now use ten strands of steel. Seven around two, wrapped by one. A cord construction so important, Firestone named the tire for it. Seven, two, one. The new steel-belted radial 721. Now, from Firestone. Pretty lady in what's left of the sunlight here in San Francisco as shadows lengthen over the field at Candlestick Park. We have 9.56 to go. First down for the 49ers at the 15-yard line. Each team has had 12 first downs in the game, and they're tied at 17. Jackson is back in there. He's got a wrap around his left thigh. Jackson, number 40. Williams, number 24, the running back. In motion is the tight end, Mitchell. Out to Jackson. Blockers in front, well defensed by the Saints. He got five on the play. It'll be second and five at the 20 of San Francisco. Here again is Plunkett's looking downfield, getting those linebackers and defensive backs to drop back deep. Jackson sets up to the outside out there, catches that ball, looks it in, waits for his offensive lineman to get out in front of him right there, picks up some blocking, gets five yards. It's a good first down play. Pat Hughes made the initial contact, number 54, with Bob Pollard right behind number 82. Second and five, the shift to the split backs again. Delvin Williams, Pollard on the hit with Grooms, number 78. Gain of maybe two on the play. You know, it looks like Jackson's hurting right there. Now, this is the time where a guy's really done a lot, great job today. If he's hurting that bad, you get a ball player out like that and get another running back in there. They've got some. They just heard you. Bobby Farrell's coming in, number 38. Jackson, number 40, is coming out. <laughs> Not a bad call, Matty. <laughs> out 
Uh, he's, he's, he's been a workhorse today. I'm sure he probably asked to go back in after he got hurt and said, come on, let me keep playing. And uh, it's obvious he just can't go anymore today. 190 yards for Wilbur Jackson, two touchdowns. What a day. Third and three. Loose ball, but after the whistle, a Saint had recovered it. Williams, I believe, the ball carrier. And he's just getting up from that pile up, and uh, the Saints a little unhappy. They thought the ball was loose before the whistle. And I think they didn't get the first down either. I don't know. Pollard put the hit on him. Let's see where they mark it. They're going to measure the ball at the 25-yard line of San Francisco. Every play critical now as we're still tied. 8.28 remaining regulation time. Tim Ryan and Tom Matty at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, and we've had a most entertaining football game. I don't know what those officials are doing out there, but they've got some problems right now. Pat Hughes, I think, is complaining about where the marker on the chain is. They put that marker on the, on the uh, line, and you can see them now marking it at the 20-yard line. Then they stretch the, the chain, and, and uh, Hughes is just not happy <laughs> with the way they're doing it. He may be less happy with the outcome if they give uh, San Francisco a first down. Let's see. This looks like the Geneva talks down here. Well, you know, look where the yard marker is. It's in front of the line there. And I think that uh, the New Orleans has a legitimate uh, right. Referee Ben Dreith is over there now consulting with the yardage marking man. And they're calling it short. Hank's down there checking things out. He's saying, yeah, right, they're short. <laughs> I'd say they're short, too. Look at there, Hank's got to, he's going to handle this. <laughs> sure, Hank's, look, it's clear. It's but, you know, come on, fellas, what's so difficult? We don't have a, an executive decision yet. <laughs> no way, he said. <laughs> That's Bobby Scott. He was going to get his two cents within number 12, but... It is fourth down. And so the 49ers send in the punting unit. I'll tell you, Plunkett's a little bit upset about that. He's going to have to hurry off the field. So the 49ers, unhappy, they'll have to punt. Widom standing on the 10-yard line. Rich Motti, the lone deep man, standing at his 31. Good low kick into that win. 49er bounce, fielded by Motti, and a block. That was a quick, clearly. The return after the 45, the flag was down immediately. I don't know, that's another very close call. I don't think it was that. My opinion was that was not a clip. He had his head in front of him. Saints. Saints don't think it was a clip. I, I thought it was a clip. Let's see. Right there. Oh, well, he was. He, got him. he had his head to the back of his shoulder. Look at that. All he had to do was get his head in front of it. The official's right on top of it. Wade That's Bosarge, number 25, was the man who threw the block on Paul Hofer, number 36, and clipping his call. So the ball goes back to the 15-yard line where it'll be first down. I'm going to do something only a Bob Lilly would do. And I'm going to use the new Black & Decker Best Line Router. It's the best home use router we've ever made. It's going to trim the ends and make a nifty edge and dovetail this drawer. It's even going to write. There. Here, Coach. <laughs> when America has a job to do, it reaches for Black & Decker. <laughs> the new Black & Decker Best Line of Power Tools. I drive Ford pickup because my daddy told me they're built tough. Right, daddy? Right. And I bought a Ford pickup because my daddy told me they were built tough. Right, daddy? Yep. And I drive a Ford pickup because my daddy told me they were built tough. Right, daddy? That's right, yeah. My daddy came to Texas in a covered wagon. I had to learn about Fords on my own. I'm a smart old bird, ain't I? <laughs> of all Ford trucks registered over the last 12 years, 93 out of 100 are still on the job. On January 2nd, CBS Sports presents the Cotton Bowl with a
the number one ranked Texas Longhorns taking on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. That's the Cotton Bowl, January 2nd. We're tied at 17 here at Candlestick Park. 8.04 to play in regulation time. Archie Manning, number eight, brings out the Saints. First down at the 15 following the clipping call against New Orleans. And he's got Eddie Lewis, fight. number 22, is in that secondary for San Francisco, replacing Tony Leonard, who was injured. You saw him on the bench a while ago. Get in there. Muncie, from the left side, still trying. Gets out to the 19-yard line. Pick up a four on the play. Tommy Hart, number 53, came all the way over from his left defensive end position to put the stop on him. You know, being, Muncie's being 6'3", at about 220 pounds, and you know, he can really run like a deer. He's got that great speed, that great outside speed, and also has that lateral movement. Muncie getting a breather. Mike Strawn comes in. Cedric Hardman giving you the serious look of a defensive lineman. One of the great pass rushers. He's nine and a half sacks already this season. Mike Strawn, number 33, stacked up by Skip Vanderbunt, number 52. Right at the 20-yard line. Not much of a gain on that play. It'll be third down. And yeah, let's say four and a half for the Saints. You know, there's a situation where on a third and, you know, five, six yards, this is where Manning goes to his backs coming out of the backfield. He has an opportunity to put an isolation on a back on a linebacker where he could either come inside or outside. And it's probably, in my opinion, still the greatest play in football right now. Muncie is back in, so we'll look for that pass here, Tom. Both Muncie and Galbraith can catch the ball real well, but they're going to let Muncie run it. Muncie battles and bowls his way over the 25-yard line. He's got first down yardage. That's a good call. Look at that. They're, they're staying with that game plan of theirs. They're running it. Cleveland Elam, number 72, the first man to hit him along with Vanderbunt. Number 52. Here it is again. Watch Muncie come across. Follows the big guard right there leading through. Cuts back up right to the inside. Puts his head down and boom it. That's a big man to bring down. 6'3", 220 pounds. Ralph McGill, number 49, in there on the tackle as well from the safety position. Interesting ball game going here, 23 to 21. Jim Zorn has three touchdown passes for Seattle. Formation right, Muncie. Good coverage by the 49ers. The left side of that defensive line. Linebacker Vanderbunt came up to help out number 75, Ed Gallagher. Vanderbunt closed that off real quick. He couldn't get to the outside. He had to go to the inside. He came across the line of scrub. He set himself up right. Knocked that back right down and filled up the hole. We're told that Wilbur Jackson is just four yards short of the all-time 49er rushing record for one game. Dell Williams said it last year with 194 against St. Louis, but it does not look like Jackson's going to get back into the game. Maybe somebody will point that out to him, to the uh, 49ers, and uh, he might give it another shot. Get in there, get in there. Good defensive effort by number 72, Cleveland Elam. Comes all the way from the backside and makes the tackle on him. About six inches on the play, and it'll be third down and about nine and a half. A little more than nine and a half. 7-7. Seven to seven. This has been a real close one. Dallas and Washington into the fourth period. And we're tied here at 17-4-44 remaining regulation time. Big number 79 over there. Emmanuel, Emmanuel Sanders, they will miss him. The right guard. Schumacher has come in to replace him, number 71. Manning under pressure. Manning tripped up and dumped at the 27-yard line. And the Saints will have to punt. The man that was putting all that pressure on him was number 86, Cedric Hardman again. All over the field, a big man moving around, I'll tell you. So the 49ers hold, and Tom Blanchard comes in to punt. Penalty against the... Saints decline by the 49ers. 
blast our referee's microphone, evidently, so we don't have that call for you. Stan Black and Carl Hofer awaiting the punch from Tom Blanchard. Blanchard steps over the 15, kicks a real boomer. Driving Black back inside the 25, gets a good block. It's out to the 35-yard line of San Francisco. And the first man to hit him was Rich Motti, number 84. 4.06 to play. We're tied at 17 all. This realistic 40-channel CB radio is on sale right now at your nearby Radio Shack for the unbelievable low price of $49.95. That's 50% off our catalog price. And... Our realistic model 466 is ready to use on all 40 CB channels. For under $50, get the convenience and security of two-way CB communication today. The sale-priced realistic 40-channel CB radio. Only at Radio Shack, a Tandy company. You get to be the superstar in renting car when you've got the kind of people who can get things ready. Even before you get there, Hertz has more of them than anyone. People who want to get their job done fast and who can put out that extra effort when things get busy. Go, Hertz. Go. People who know the most important thing is getting each customer away fast into a reliable Ford or other fine car. Come to Hertz. The superstar in rental car You know it. <laughs> Well, it's cooled off a little bit here in Candlestick, as you can see. Four oh six to go. First down, 49ers at the 35-yard line. Tim Ryan and Tom Maddy with NFL action for you on CBS. And a good one, the Saints and the 49ers. Bobby Farrell. Tom Farrell at the... 40-yard line, Pat Hughes, it was such a good hit that Hughes hurt himself on it. He really popped the shoulder into Farrell. Bobby Farrell in there for Wilbur Jackson. Farrell, a second-year man from UCLA and a refugee from the Old World Football League. Hughes is back up and uh, planning on staying in there. Hughes took the job away from Greg Westbrooks, who had been the starter, got hurt. Two or three weeks ago, Hughes came in, and Greg's ready to play, but he can't get Hughes this hard. Good depth design back in that position for New Orleans. Farrell again, number 38. Not much running room. Stacked up by Mike Folks, number 72, and then Bob Pollard and Grooms finished him off. You know, San Diego, fourth court, 30 to 21 over Seattle. That's a good ball game. Zorn must be having a great day, Tim. Three touchdown passes. Fred Dean just ran 22 yards for the San Diego score to make it interesting. Third down. Let's call it three and a half to go for the 49ers as they try to get the drive alive here that uh, could be the winning drive if they can keep it going. Farrell breaks the tackle. Farrell has the first down. That was a big play right there. Farrell makes a great run on that. He almost got hit in the backfield and broke the tackle and got the first down, keeps this drive moving. We've only got 234 left going. Watch, watch Farrell come across right now. It's a trap to the inside. The guard's pulling to the outside. Farrell breaks a tackle there, breaks a Watch the six, seven. Dives for the first down. A good running play. Tripped up by Fettersfield, finished off by Merlo. Time ticking off. 216 remaining. We're tied at 17. The Niners are running out of the eye formation. One of the rare times they've done that. Delvin Williams did not get much. Tommy Myers, a safety, came up along with Ernie Jackson, 37 and 30, to put the hit on him. And that brings us to the two-minute warning here. With the score still tied at 17 from Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Ford introduces Futura. A dramatic combination of styling and technology for 1978 and beyond. Futura, designed by computer modeling and aerodynamic testing. It can provide excellent fuel economy and room for five passengers as well. Futura, designed for 1978 and beyond. Realistically priced for today. See your Ford dealer for a personal test drive. From RCA, an advancement in remote control television, a color track control center. 
In an eighth of a second, it switches from one channel to any other, directly, without clicking through the channels in between. It shows time and channel with each change. It controls volume, color, and tint. It puts so much control in your hands, the knobs have been taken off the set. The Color Track Control Center, another way RCA is making television better and better. Two minutes to play in regulation time. 49ers have the ball. They have it second and eight. And Ray Worshing and maybe kind of waiting the possibilities <laughs> that he could be the hero again. He beat these guys in overtime. That's right. Ten to seven. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago at the Superdome. I tell you that you know he kicked out. He's kicking into the wind though, so we'll see what with the wind rather. Well, so he kicked into the air conditioning in the Superdome, <laughs> so maybe he's uh, he's good at that. We'll see if he gets the opportunity. The Saints obviously don't even want him to have a shot at it. Slot formation left. Puckett has gone all the way at quarterback. Delvin Williams cutting back. And is stopped at the line of scrimmage. There was nowhere to go. Grooms was there. New Number Orleans. 78. Chuck Crist came up. Jim Merlo was there. And Tommy Myers. So the two safeties got right into the middle of that one. Myers and Crist. Third and seven. And if the 49ers want to get that field goal shot from Worshing, uh, they've got to make first down here. Yep. They got to come up with that big play right here. Watch those backs coming out of the backfield. Borderline. Borderline. She is in also. And Borderline is in at linebacker. Marsalis is in. In the secondary for New Orleans. Delvin Williams. Oh, where they mark it here is going to be the whole story. Delvin Williams had a good hole behind the right side of his line. Peoples and Fonhorst and center Randy Cross. And it looks like they're a little bit short, but again, and these are good calls that these guys are coming up with. They're going to measure. Brooms made the stop on it, Tom. This is the measurement of the game. 113 on the clock. Hank Stram would like to help with this one. <laughs> now here's another coaching decision. What is Mayer going to do? They're short. Right? They're short by about four or five inches. They're going to go for it. In comes Obradovich. In comes number 65. Lawson. Harrison comes out. Obradovich at tight end. Delvin Williams with 65 yards rushing today. Not too shabby. Behind his teammate Robert Jackson has been the big star for the 49ers. Big Put down. Put down. Looked like he had it. If he has the ball, the 49ers will keep the drive alive. They sure will. They got 49 their time. seconds. First down, San Francisco. Grooms was underneath it, doing the best he could, along with the rest of the middle of that line, Pollard and Fultz. Hank Stram, concerned on the sideline. 17 to 17, with 49 seconds remaining in regulation time. We might be staring at a little overtime, or who knows? Just listen to that. That's just one of the great original hits in this exclusive new Firestone Christmas album. This is a really big collection of all-time favorite Christmas classics with many of the artists who made them famous. It's yours for only $1.69. Eight-track tape, $1.99. At Firestone stores and dealers just about everywhere. Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm Decker. Is the most expensive taste in beer. Who says so? You will. Undecker may become your favorite beer. Who says so? You will. Undecker. Costly ingredients, patient aging. You don't know what a difference that makes, but you will. Undecker. The most expensive taste in beer. If you haven't tried it yet, you will. You know, Tim. In Candlestick Park here, you know, this wind plays such an important factor. If you look at one end zone, the flags are blowing one way, and you look at the goalposts at the other end, and the wind's blowing that way. So it's got that twirling motion, so it's going to be a tough kick no matter what. First down for the 49ers. Maybe they can avoid the kick. They'd like to. Bucket throwing on first down. Scrambling. Dropped by Bob Pollard, number 82. 
the seven-year man from Weber State, 29 years of age, the veteran along that front four. Loss of two on the play. And Mr. Plunkett calls another timeout. That was great coverage by the New Orleans Saints in their prevent defense. Plunkett had no one to go to, so he had to eat that ball. <laughs> this is where you come over to the sideline when you're a quarterback looking for words of wisdom. What do I do now, coach? <laughs> That's Ken Myers, coach, talking to him. And Hank Stram's got to be uh, happy with the play of his young kids on that front four. Fultz and Campbell, the starters today, the two rookies, his first and second draft picks. And they're in a real critical situation. They've got the steadying hand of Bob Pollard out there, the seven-year veteran. But another young man, 24-year-old Eloise Grooms, third-year man from Tennessee Tech. So there's a lot on the shoulders of a couple of rookies and a young Saints team here as they try to get the ball back or at least finish this game uh, with the score tied and take their chances in the OT. 43 seconds, as you can see, on the clock. You know, in talking to Stram yesterday, he says, this is a young ball club. We're rebuilding. We're not going to win any, set any records this year. He says, but doggone it, we're going to have a ball club next year. And he says, you know, the fans down in New Orleans have been just great to me. And he said, uh, we want to have a winner. He said, that's what I'm going after, wins. 49ers going after a win here. They have the ball. 43 seconds remaining, second and 12. Slot formation right. Washington in the slot. Williams and Farrell are the running backs. Crockett had lots of time. Intercepted. He underthrew it intended for Harrison. And it's Ernie Jackson, number 30 on the interception. So the Saints stop the 49ers. The flag is down, however. Roughing it's the against passer. New Orleans. Let's see where the call is. There's a flag down in the San Francisco backfield. Right, it looks like roughing the passer, Tim. What a break for San Francisco. That's an automatic first down. The ball is spotted at the 29-yard line. Here comes Ben Dreyer. Roughing the quarterback, 72. 72, Mike Fultz, the rookie from Nebraska. Roughing the quarterback, a tough break for the rookie and for the Saints, and the 49ers get a good break. An interception that turns into first down at the 29. This is one of the things that's killed New Orleans today. They've had seven penalties and 70 yards. Well, San Francisco's only had three and 20. 36 seconds remaining. First down. Delvin Williams. Bob Pollard from behind, number 82, and Chuck Crisp, number 44, came up from the safety position. Diving underneath Williams, and he picked up four yards on the play. Second and six. Clock ticking off. 16 seconds remaining. He's going to wait to that last second to call a timeout, going for the field goal. They're down to five. There he is. <laughs> five tell you, seconds on the clock. This could be a real heartbreak of her heart for Hank Stram again, Doug Gunn. You know, this New Orleans is a young ball club that played their hearts out today. And this is going to be a tough field goal. Don't anybody kid you. This wind in the Candlestick Park is whirling around. You know what it's doing out there? Although they have a little advantage. They practice here a little bit, so they know what's happening. But it's, it's a tough wind to play into. Chuck Crest over there on the sidelines, along with some other defenders, to discuss how to rush this field goal attempt. The ball is at the 25-yard line, and he'll be kicking it from 9 or 10 yards back of that. There you get a chance to see what it looks like as a field goal kicker looking right into the into the uprights. You can see how tall those uprights are. Someday I'll get into a story why those things are 10 feet higher than they were before. Last week <laughs> the Saints came from behind to beat Atlanta 21 to 20 in a thriller. They lost 10 to 7 to these Saints in a similar situation two weeks ago. It's spotted at the 32. And it's good. Ray Worshing, a 42-yard field goal as time runs out. And Ray Worshing has beaten the New Orleans Saints as he did two weeks ago in overtime. This time as regulation time runs out. And the New Orleans...
Golden Saints are sick, and they rightfully deserve to be. They played a great ball game. It's a young ball club, and damn it, they've got oh, they got a lot of places to go. <laughs> That's all right, Tom. Nobody will notice. 20 to 17 for the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> Here at Candlestick Park in a real thriller that went right down to the final seconds and will return to Candlestick in just a moment. Ah, oh, we got a great one. Can I get you something else? Yeah. An ambulance. <laughs> Americans overeat more than anyone. But what's really getting fat is the cost of health care. Oh, when more peace won't hurt you. Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans have programs to hold costs down. But everybody needs to help. Son, when you eat like this, I just love you to death. There is no free lunch. Sooner or later, we all pay for it. All of us help this drop is too little to cover the head of a match. Yet this is enough adhesive, super strong, super fast to lift two and a half tons. It's Duro Super Glue. A drop will do to mend jewelry, ceramics, rubber, and glass in only 10 seconds. It truly is super strong and super fast. Super Glue, a drop will do. Super Glue, a product of Loctite technology. Here's the game-winning field goal by Ray Wershing of the San Francisco 49ers. As time ran out, it gave the 49ers a 20-17 victory. They had not led throughout the game, but they came up with the three points that won it, defeating the Saints 20-17 here at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. And so for Tom Maddy, this is Tim Ryan saying so long from San Francisco and reminding you that next week, the CBS Sports Spectacular on Saturday will present the International Record Makers Tournament of Weightlifting and the World's Strongest Man. Right now, let's join Pat Summerall and Tom Brookshire in Washington for the Dallas-Washington game.